call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have on the board anything you'd like to amend? Or? Do you want to move the uh, executive session until after, till the end? How, how long do you think it will be in executive session? Not very really long, but it just might be a hassle that everybody leaves and come back. If we move it to after the minutes and communications and all that. Yeah. Might be a easier. You can. Both. That's right. Are you kidding? No. Yeah, we'll be. Mine says it is at the end. No, mine. Does yours say that too? No, mine shows. Uh, All right, that's. Well, you, you need to get. So you got it cut off. The printout version has it, but our, our packets don't. Mine's right here. So this printed right version. Oh, right here. It's at the end, but right. in the packets it's not. So. Okay, so never mind. It's posted. It's actually posted out of the right way. Okay. So it has been moved to the end. Of okay. All right. All right. So disregard. So we're good there. All right. Anything we want to add or? We do want to move the new member for the Energy, energy Committee up so that he doesn't have to sit here quite so long tonight. Sure, we yeah, can we can move him right up front. How's that? So we move up front? Yep. Or we, we can just move him in front of the budget discussion and uh, take him before the appointments. Okay, right up. Okay, yeah. Did you get that, Lisa? It's coming before the appointments. We're just going to put him in front of the budget discussion under reports, motions, and ordinances. Oh, okay. And we'll just take him before the before the appointment. Yeah. Everybody good with that? Wait. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the appointment does start at six fifteen. They're just kind of rolling. Okay. Anything else? Approve the amendment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? And we will move to public comment or inquiry. Anything that anybody from the public has that is not included in tonight's agenda would be the time to raise that. So I think Lucian. Okay, Lucian Henkel, for the record. I live up Sanders Road. And as you go up Sanders Road from Christian Hill Road, you come to a spot in the road that's extremely narrow. And there's two large outcroppings of ledge on the right. And up near the top, there are about four very old trees that are rotting out. And it's a very narrow and very dangerous spot. And this, uh, this slot, as I call it, as you're going up, is just before you get to the top where uh, Wilson Hill Road goes off to the left. Uh, uh, about a month ago, I met a, uh, a quarry truck coming up right there, and uh, I had to pull way over, he pulled way over, we were able to get by each other. He had a very hard time getting started back up the hill. Uh, the other day I met, uh, further up the road, where the road is very wide, I met a large tandem logging truck barreling up the road. Again, I pulled over and stopped, and he came within about a foot of me when he passed. Uh, it would have been extremely dangerous if we had met further down in what I call the slot. This is a, is a dangerous interface, and it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what truck you meet, whether it's a logging truck, a quarry truck, a UPS truck. My wife almost had an accident once with a propane truck. Uh, so uh, about a month ago or more, I called Rock of Ages because mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to them about this since, uh, you know, getting this fixed is so much in their interest. And a very, very nice fellow called me back. We had a good conversation. Towards the end of the conversation, I asked him, because of this ledge on the right as you're going up, it really needs to be drilled and blasted and gotten rid of. And there is access. There are like two humps of it. And there is easy access on each hump for a drill. So I asked him if he would be willing to bring one of his drills out and drill and blast it. And he said they don't use that kind of a drill, but when they do need that kind, they subcontract it out. And at the end of the conversation, he said he'd be willing to work with us about this. So there are three things that need to be done. The ledge needs to be drilled and blasted, and the town would have to clean up the rubble. Uh, there are some trees growing on top of the ledge. Most of them are small. I think there's one large pine tree and maybe two other large trees. Might even be able to get a logger interested in coming and take those trees just for the taking. Uh, 
and then up near the top, there are these four very old maples that are literally rotting out in the middle. You can see where, uh, over time, a few limbs have just broken off because they are survived, and they should be removed. So I would like to ask the town to start the process going forward to fix that part. Are you familiar with that section of the road? I think so. Can we, um, can we have somebody go up and take a look at that? Yeah, I'll go take a look at it. Um, it sounds as though maybe I need to make the connection with the Rock of Ages people through. I'm sorry, the acoustics in here are bad. The driller, the person you said would drill it, did you say that was for Rock of Ages? Yes, okay. well, from the manager called me back. <clears throat> okay, do you um, happen to have the, or can I get the contact information yes, from you? Yes, I have his name and phone number. I figured you did. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, if you'd like me to, I can reach out to them and just maybe get an idea of what we're looking at for a, for a timeline and a cause. Go from there. So we probably won't have enough time at the next board meeting. Next board meeting is actually t next week. So um, could we put a follow-up <coughs> on our meeting after that, which would be January 14th? I can try. I'm going to just for a week. see where we're at at that point. And, um, it may take a little while longer than that to get the information. Yeah, but. yeah. I mean, it sounds like it's just going. Oh, we're going to be kind of at the mercy of them as far as when they want to, when they can budget it, or when they can schedule to get it in. But I'll I'll, yeah. I'll reach out to them and see if I can at least get a, a cost and take a look at the what it's actually going to cost, what it's going to take for our people to, <coughs> to do the rubble removal and all that. Yeah, the town yeah, uh, crew could probably get rid of most of the little trees. As I said, there are like three large ones. I mean, they could cut them down too, but it might be worthwhile for somebody, especially sure. if one of them's a large pine tree, it might be worth something to yeah. somebody. Okay, well, if you want me to, I'll go out and take a look at it, and we'll kind of get started on it. Would you mind that. if I came along? Cause I, uh, sure. Okay, I wouldn't mind. Can when do you want to do it? When do you want to go out there? What's good for you? When, when would you like to go out there? Uh, Any time it, it, it's convenient for you. Okay. I'm probably going to be gone uh, tomorrow. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday this week I might be gone, but otherwise I'm How about tomorrow? Much available. Am tomorrow? I tomorrow, sure. What time? 10? 10. 10 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. I'll meet you there. Tomorrow at 10. Okay. All right, good. I'll meet you there. If we're going to cut trees, you can go to the island. I'd rather wait. We've got to contact the landowner yeah. the trees. Mm -hmm. I talked to yep. John. Did you <coughs> mention something about that? He lives in the, in the house at the very top, right on the corner of where yeah. Wilson Hill is. John Presser, I live at 14 Wilson Hill. Uh, I'm the closest to that point. Now, I agree that that should be moved back, but there's an advantage to the way it is. It's the only thing that stops cars and trucks, all sizes, it keeps them slowed down. Because I see cars and trucks coming north and south, well mainly they're headed south, uh, at well over 25, till just they pass my house, and then they say, oh, I gotta slow down here because I can't see what's coming up the hill. Now, if it's wider and they can see, I don't have to slow down yet. Now again, uh, I wait for cars, trucks coming up. I expect it. But yeah, it would make it a lot nicer on everyone. But it's going to speed up traffic. And that's going to be more wear and tear on the road. So that's just. You know, my opinion, I'm the closest one to that spot, so I see it a lot. So, uh, that's my, my two cents worth. Yep. Yep. Well, it doesn't slow down the traffic on the rest of the road. <coughs> no, and no, it doesn't it's slow it down any place else. And it's going to make it much safer, because someday there's going to be a bad accident. Well, I will meet with you, and I'll go over what we're talking about, sure. take some pictures, get a cost, and then I'll bring it back to the board for a, uh, and you guys can. Well, I think at this point, you know, in regards to the board here would be, is to get a, 
a picture or pictures of any of the safety hazards that we may may or may not have on the road right. um, and get all the information and then we can start that process. And I'll bring it back to you for future discussion. So I'll meet you at the top of the hill and there's a, it's, it's a, there's a wide space there right at the top. Okay. By Wilson Hill. Uh, okay, I'll Wilson. see you at 10 o'clock. Thank you, tomorrow at 10. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else? Anything not on the agenda? Hearing none, we will move on. Uh, let's see. Prior to, we got we got you, Tom, um, for six fifteen. I just want to squeeze in. We have a um, an energy committee uh, member appointing that we just want to squeeze in quickly, and then we'll get right to you. That's okay. So we'll go right to um, item two. Everybody's got the information in regards to Bob Carey. And um, Jose's looking to appoint him to the Energy Committee. Do you have anything, Jose, you want to say? Or are you good to go? Or? Just, you want Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess at this point, I'd just be looking for a motion to appoint uh, Robert Carey to the um, Energy Commission. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, guys, have it. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Yep, have a good evening. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. Make sure I wrote that down. The last one, um, you're meeting with him t tomorrow at 10, is what he said? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. We will um, we'll go with our 615 appointment. The board's okay with that a few minutes early, but um, so Tom, <coughs> Sage Coach. Thanks, uh, thanks for, for having me today. Uh, as you might know, I've been Bethel Stage Coach representative since 2014. The purpose of my request to meet with you today is to provide an update on Stagecoach Regional Operations and an update on the Tri-Valley Transit, the new merged organization and its finances. And to collect comments, questions, suggestions, and anything else that the Bethel Select Board would like to share with Stagecoach and your representative. And I think we can do this all within the 15 minutes that we have. Back in 2014, I was one member of the newly formed Board of Directors to help stabilize and rebuild that organization and assist with the merger of Stagecoach and Addison County Regional Transit, also known as ACTOR, into Tri-Valley Transit. Uh, while both organizations retain their brand and their individual identities to do business sta as Stagecoach and ACTOR, the new legal entities, TBT, Tri-Valley Tri Transit. So we may have to use some abbreviations in the discussion. Uh, upon joining Stagecoach, I was appointed treasurer in 2014, and after the merger, I was appointed TBT treasurer. I still am treasurer um, as of 2017. Okay, to start my update on regional Stagecoach operations, I'm going to provide a brief background. Stagecoach provides vital service to our community and the larger region by providing transportation to people to go to school, to go to work, go to health centers, go to shopping centers, and senior centers. Currently, through the Stagecoach Network, Bethel residents can go to points north, up to Berlin and Montpelier, or points south, or River, Woodstock, London, Hanover, and to our communities in between. What's new since we last met was, uh, is that within the new TDT organization, we've established two regional operating committees, or ROCs, R-O-C, ROCs, I'll, I'll refer to those. Uh, as OROC, Orange County slash North Windsor Regional Operating Committee, which is Stagecoach essentially, and Addison A Rock, A Rock. The purpose of these committees is to ensure the service, meet, uh, the, the service meets the needs of the community. Uh, these rocks were formed to engage with communities to understand their needs, 
to monitor service levels and identify service gaps, to raise ridership on existing lines, to plan for future service changes, and to evaluate, prioritize, and participate on projects affecting their region. I'm a member of OROC, and I participate in their bi-monthly meetings. And as Bethel's rep, I have input into those meetings and in setting priorities. Therefore, I welcome any and all input from the select board regarding service to our town tonight, in the future. Uh, I'm an open ear and open uh, input to that committee. Subjects that we're dealing with right now include expansion of the 89er North to extend service to Rochester and Chelsea and Sharon. And that goes to Montpelier, Berlin, and uh, I beg your pardon, um, that goes to White River and uh, Hanover, et cetera. Um, expansion of the 89er North, which goes to Montpelier and Berlin, and extending service to Bear. And we're in the initial stages of a pretty significant project, a two to three year project to replace the Bradford bus barn in coordination with VTrans. Um, we've sec secured already $2 million in federal funding. And the next major steps involve hiring a project manager, hiring a contractor, um, additional fundraising from foundations, businesses, and other local sources. So before I move on to update on the Tri Valley Transit and its finances, I'll ask the select board if they have any comments or questions, concerns related to stagecoach services in Bethel. No? Okay, my I'm I'm here and uh later on. So I just wanted you to know that uh, we do we have the added committees below the TBT to really focus on service and understanding the gaps and, and fixing those. Tom, can I, uh, if I can ask a question. When, sure. you, when you, you also provide local service to pick up people to take to the senior centers and things like That's that. Correct. That's correct. Has any of that changed uh, as far as um, distance, you know, how far they live to the senior center, whether or not they're eligible to be <coughs> picked up? Or, or the, have the roots changed at all? Is any of that? I occasionally hear some, you know, things about that, but I don't uh, have anything that's, solid. That's typically a demand, a call, dial a line, call up, and, and a volunteer will come and get that person. And, 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 and I don't think there's too many limits on that. These are more the regular, you know, going to the uh, the senior center in um, Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. On, on a bus? Yeah, on a, on a regular that, route. Yeah, that's a fixed route. Is it? That's a fixed route. But if people need to have an appointment somewhere that mm -hmm. they're not close to the fixed route, they have no way to get to that bus, they can call and get a ride. So those routes haven't really changed. Yeah. You know, you know, they're kind of ad hoc as people call up. Okay. So next is my update on the new merged organization called Tri-Valley Transit and its finances. TBT was formed July 1st, 2017 and completed its first year of operations on June 30th, 2018. And this merger was a necessary step to enable Stagecoach to continue operations. And the new organization, I can say, is thriving, relatively thriving. Uh, our first annual audit was recently completed, and the news from that is positive. We're in compliance with all federal programs that provide our funding. There are no deficiencies in the management letter. And we're a financially stable organization with $7 million in assets. Uh, but that's not without challenges. Uh, despite significant shortfalls in Medicaid funding, we still manage a small surplus in fiscal 18. However, to do that, we've had to delay replacing buses, and but, um, we've found some efficiencies in the new organization. We've had to delay hiring some key positions. Right now, we have an open uh, regional manager position and, uh, and a uh, community relations manager position. We're hiring. We're trying to hire for those positions, but those are some of the gaps that helped us eke out that small surplus. Five months, we're now five months into fiscal 19, and we're similarly forecasting um, 
a small surplus, but under the same challenges that we're, we're facing. So positive news, not negative news, but cautiously optimistic. Uh, as you know, our annual appeal for funding is in progress, and letters were sent to the select board, um, to all town select boards um, in September. And in December, we'll be mailing out our annual reports. Um, this was last year's. And an appeal letter to individuals and foundations and um, other potential donors. As you're aware, I think 80% of our funding comes from federal or state sources, but it requires 20% local MAC to pull that money down. So Stagecoach seeks only, of that 20%, seeks a quarter or 5% of our whole town, of our whole budget from town sources. So in order to make that equitable across the, uh, the community, we've uh, established what we call a fair share formula. Okay? And what the fair share formula is based on is the size of the town and the demand for the services. And we use that to ask for um, support. Um, we introduced this concept last year, a year ago. So folks have heard about it. And, and entertain any questions if, if you have and to the extent that I can answer them. Um, but that is intended to, to distribute that 5% share of where it goes to use. Okay. Um, most towns are contributing less than their fair share and we at Stagecoach and at TBT across the mountains to Addison County would like to gradually bring these up. I will say that local match at 20% that we need to raise locally 5% from towns, the other 15%. Stagecoach is taking on the responsibility of raising that money. So, of the chunk that we need to do, Stagecoach is definitely doing its, its part to do that uh, through uh, programs with institutions and businesses and individuals. So, kind of a shared responsibility to, to uh, bring those funds in. Uh, Beth, last year, Bethel's fair share calculation was 5,900. And in our last letter, last year's letter to the select board, uh, following this approach of gradual increases, this is something that we've been working with for a little over a year now, we asked for $4,500. And Human Services recommended $3,500. On the floor of town meeting, uh, primarily due to increased services provided to Bethel from the data that I had, and that I could I could share a town meeting, I requested an increase of $500 to $4,000, essentially splitting the difference between what the committee offered and what Stagecoach had requested. So that, that passed, um, and $4,000 is approximately um, two-thirds of that whole fair share, just for relative purposes. Remember, we want to gradually, if possible, all towns to gradually meet their fair share. Um, so, not sure that the time is right for an increase now. We've already received the letter back in September. Um, we asked for a level funding. We didn't ask for an increase this time. I don't know that, you know. I don't have the ridership information right now to say uh, maybe it's warranted. At the time last year, we had a ridership increase of 32% to Bethel. And we asked, and in the, in the funding increase was 29%. So I think that that was in line, again, still behind the fair share, but um, still within, within reason. So I am expecting an update from Stagecoach on those ridership numbers, hopefully uh, for the current year, um, <coughs> December, for the first half of the year, uh, potentially a projection. Uh, towards the end of the year, don't know how reliable that will be, but maybe we'll have numbers in the first six months of the year, July through December. And I, I, I'd like to get the, the uh, select board's opinion on that, uh, if, it, if it would make sense to go to the floor again, if it, if it was a huge increase in ridership, or could we ask for a modest increase? I don't know what the, what the what's in the budget right now, and then we submitted a request level funding for four thousand dollars. So in closing, I'll ask the, the state uh, select board if they have any comments, questions, concerns. 
uh, regarding the new TDT organization, its finances, the fair share formula, our approach to gradual increases, or our request this year for other funding. Well, I know right now, Tom, we, I mean, we're actually tonight we'll be talking about the human services portion of our budget. Um, that's usually taken care of through the human services committee. Um, I'm sure they are working on that or, or have made the decision. Um, but definitely, if we can get the data as soon as we can. Um, I know last year when we were looking at it, the, the increases were, I guess you guys were tracking the increases, you know, where we were just a couple of years ago at three, 4,000 <coughs> riders. Maybe I think 10,000 or something was, if I remember right, I was have, have the number. Was that yeah, right? yeah, there was. Um, so there was quite a significant increase of ridership yeah. um, foreseen. I just wonder how that actually came, you know, if it did come to. Last year, we were at 13,600 riders. 13, and the year before, it was 10 3. So that's the 32% increase that I referred to mm -hmm. relative to the 29% mm -hmm. increase. No, do you still have the programs with was it, uh, with Dartmouth? Oh yeah. Um, but they are they able to give you some funding too? No, they're pretty significant. That's one of the institutions that it gives um, the hospital, the college. Um, Gifford has a, has a small <coughs> program similar to that. Mm. Yeah, we, we depend on those mm. um, institutions. Mm -hmm. they're, they're doing what they can to. And I mean it. Being our representation from for Bethel, I mean, based on what we currently are at, and you know where our fair share ridership should be, I mean, w regardless of looking at the budget, where do you feel that we should be for this year? I know you asked for level funding, but um, you know, I, I, I think that we need to be on a track where it's a gradual build up, whether that's you know to get us to a fair share, whether it's three years or six years, you know, I. I thought that $500 last year was, um, I don't know how much it caught the select board and the human services committee off guard, but I think that's similar. When, you know, pending what I get for ridership um, information, um, I would say they kind of go hand in hand, but knowing already that we're a little bit behind. Um, it's kind of like, as I said, most, most towns are. Some are in step with the fair share, but most are, are behind. Um, I think. Well, I, I, I can speak to the, hum, the Human Services Committee. I'm, on, I'm the chair of the committee, and so we have a number of factors that we look at, and we have 17 or 18 different agencies. That, so we try to look at, you know, the whole bottom line, too, uh, where it comes out. So, um, I think the, the process that you went through last year was very appropriate to, to do that. That's exactly what you can do. Any of these agencies can get up at town meeting and do a presentation and make a suggestion and have the, the town, because the taxpayers in the end are the ones that are, are putting the money up. So I think that it was very appropriate you know, that you did that last year. <clears throat> now this year, if, once you come up with a, a firmer number, you can revisit that process again, um, and uh, you know that's that's how the process worked. Okay. No, I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. I, I'm uh, also comfortable communicating in advance of that. So, like mm -hmm. I said, if you want anybody to feel all caught off guard, or we can have that conversation beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I last year, like last year we had a. I can't really speak to what what's going on this year, but I know last year we. We did decrease from your requested amount, so we kind of anticipated that you would be possibly coming in with that process. You know, a town meeting, and it's great. It, it works. Has the human services, have you guys yes, completed your process? Yes. Okay. We, haven't, we haven't officially announced it or, or brought it to the select board yet. But okay. we, did, we did meet last week. Went through our process. Okay. Is that a public meeting when you all go bring it? To no. <laughs> no. Well, we have to present it to the select board next. And then once the select board takes a look at it and makes any recommendations, positive or negative, then we can advise the agencies as to what our proposed um, amount will be that goes into the budget, uh, to the town report, and to the you know, proposed to the town taxpayers. That is a public meeting. It is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that will be the yeah. one seventeen. 17. Okay. Yeah. 
So I guess you're more than welcome to come back to that meeting um, next week if uh, yeah, or, needed. Yeah, or you, know, you can always get your hands on a little bit early. Uh, we, we, if you call the office, we can get it to you, or it's posted on our website. Great. Usually the, the packet is posted on our website if there are two people at the board meeting, if at all possible. Any other further questions? Discussion from the board? I have one more question. Is, okay. is annually enough to hear from your state bench representative? I, I mean, I would bring something to you if I thought it was yeah. important enough. Yeah. If yeah. that, this kind of once a year yeah. works, I'm happy to. No, Devin. Any impact on the, uh, the drop off point at the White Church there? Any new difficulties? Uh, any heard. situations? You heard anything? <clears throat> no, I would think uh, once a year is sufficient, and you know, unless something comes up that needs to be brought to our attention, you're more than welcome at any time to come to the meeting, and you know, we can conduct it as a you know public comment period, or or you can always talk to Greg about getting on as an appointment. So. Well, we thank you for your time, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And 6.30. Is there anybody here for the White River Partnership? Yes. So we're a little bit, I wouldn't say quite blindsided, but don't really have all the well, information yeah, in, in regards to which you're here tonight. I need to know background information, too. Okay. So you're going to have to start sure. from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Can I give a quick background? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Mary Russ. <coughs> I'm the director of the White River Partnership. Um, my name is Steve Levy from the Vermont River Conservancy. And we've been working together on a project in East Bethel on the second branch of the White River. Um, so Sam Lincoln reached out to us a couple of years ago and let us know he'd be interested in selling his dam, the high dam in East Bethel. And we've funded uh, raising funds to purchase that property. So Vermont River Conservancy is now the owner, the proud owner of 24 acres in the dam in East Bethel. Um, and we've received some funds to design a project to take that dam out of the river to improve fish passage and flood resilience in that spot. Um, so we're working through those projects details now and are planning on maybe taking it out in 2020. So we wanted to bring it to your attention to let you know that it was happening. And also to talk about maybe some long-term ownership options. So with that hard note, I'll turn it over to Steve. <laughs> OK, thanks. Yeah, I'm Steve Libby. I'm the Executive Director of the Vermont River Conservancy. Uh, we're based in Montpelier, but we've worked with Mary on a lot of projects here in the White River watershed. Um, and this particular project is, is um, one that we are happy to partner up with Wire Partnership as the short interim owner of the property while the um, dam removal and kind of river restoration work is happening. Um, we, we actually, uh, we bought the property, uh, I think in September this fall, and we did have some initial um, environmental assessments done of the property, because whenever we buy property, we look to see if there's any sort of you know, you know, contamination issues and because this site has been a dam, a mill site for, gosh, you know, 150 more years, there was, um, it's, it's kind of a prudent thing for us to do it. So we've done what's called a phase one environmental assessment. The consultants didn't find anything terrible, but what they did find was a lot of buried metal. Cars and cars were buried on the site, that sort of thing. So they wanted to do a phase two assessment, uh, which will probably happen in the spring. And the phase two assessment is where they go in and really kind of do detailed soil borings to see if there's any soil contamination. And depending on what they find, then what we've done in the past on projects like this is also work with funders to do the cleanup work. So under our ownership, um, we'll um, do whatever site remediation work needs to be done, work with Mary and her crew as the dam removal and kind of river restoration takes place. And then in the end, um, we know that spot's a popular <coughs> fishing spot. So what we'd like to do is, um, you know, pretty, it's a 0.4 acre parcel, so it's not very big, but 
They have um, some, and I don't know if you folks are familiar with that site at all, but there's kind of the upper level and then there's a, uh, maybe a 10 or 15 foot drop down to the river itself to um, put in some simple stairs, uh, maybe reuse some of the stone from the old mill that was there and provide a, a fishing access point or other, you know, purposes that might, people might want to get down to the river. Um, so that's kind of the general plan. And um, when we've done this in other communities, um, we've often turned the property over to the community when the project is all finished. And if that's something that the town would be interested in, we'd certainly like to you know, work with you on that. Uh, we feel that these sites are, you know, they're like community assets. So having them as part of a community sort of recreational system uh, has made sense in a lot of other towns. So that's a ways down the road, I think at least a couple years. But during our ownership of the next few years, um, we'll continue to pay property taxes and we'll, um, again, work with Mary and push the project forward. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay. Where where is the property located? I'm not familiar. <coughs> so it's all is it first? Yeah, it's sort of it's where the old sawmill is crossed right. from Hyde's. On the south oh, oh, okay. bridge. Okay. Right. Yeah. That yeah. will be right at the store yeah, you Star Hill. Yeah. Right there, right at the corner there. Yeah, if you come over the bridge, it's immediately on your left. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know where it is. Yeah, we work in the, the two two family that's right adjacent. Yeah, we've got some great old historic photos of the site with, yeah. you know, three or four big mill buildings there. My father shipped logs down there in the 30s. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Huh. A lot of history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Our goal is just to let you know that it's happening and, mm -hmm. you know, if you have any questions, and we'll, you know, we'll be in touch with um, other folks in the community and, you know, make sure that it's, it's not a mystery what's going on there at the site. So. You bought the old sawmill then, by the way. Not well. We 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 didn't buy the sawmill. Okay. That's on the north kind of north side of the where we bought the land. On the south side, there's still remnants. There's still uh, stone foundation remnants of of the, the old dam. Yep. Of the old mill, and, and the, the dam man. is still intact. Yep. So. Well, good. Well, feel free to you know, keep uh, Greg in the loop on. Yeah. what's going on and then when we get to the the point here two or three years down the road of you know what the town can can help out or take over or something like that then great thank you thank you for your time yeah, thanks for coming So it isn't quite 6.45, but is everybody okay with this moving along to our yep. next appointment? Sure. So we have Dubois and King. I'm assuming Dubois and King. <laughs> uh, process of elimination, didn't say anybody else. So. Um, we had a, a, well, if Greg wants to start or, or I, you know. We, um, so we just finished up a uh, project, uh, Bridge 33, uh, Layville, High Bridge, whatever it's called. Um, and there were a couple, a couple minor issues with uh, the project. Um, and at the request of the board, uh, I invited representatives from Dubois. Is it Dubois or Dubois? Dubois. Dubois, sorry. Dubois, sorry, yeah. Dubois and King here to, uh, to get, discuss and kind of look back on, on the, you know, things that went right, things that went wrong, and, and how we kind of move forward from there. So that's kind of the introduction. Okay, um, I'm Martha Evans Munden. I work for Dubois and King. I was the senior structural engineer on this project. This is Darren Benoit. He's the director of transportation activities for Dubois and King. Um, and I put together a little bit of a timeline so that I could have a basis to talk to you about the project. Um, so we've been developing the project for a while. My timeline sort of starts um, just before we did the bidding of the project because most of the issues that Greg alludes to happened after bidding and before the end of construction. So 
Um, on March 7th this year, I had an on-site meeting with Jerry Borg, who is the river management engineer for this area. He's with uh, the state ANR, and um, he um, gives permits for stream alteration projects. And that's why I met with him. We needed a stream alteration permit for this particular project on the Lilliesville Road. Um, I showed him the plans that we had developed to that point, and he um, was of the opinion that the wing wall, as it was laid out, constricted the stream too much, and he wanted us to make a change. So at that point, the length of the wing wall was 24 feet, and it came off of the, the face of the abutment at a 60 degree angle. And he said that was sticking out too much into the stream. So he wanted it pulled back about 12 degrees, so it came off at a 72 degree angle. Um, pulling it back closer to the road like that um, made the wing wall longer because if you can get farther away from the road, you can have a slope coming down from the road, you can shorten the wing wall. But because we had to pull it in and get out of the stream more, the wing wall got longer. It went to a 42 foot long wing wall rather than 24 because of that change in angle. Um, on March 15th, Jaron approved that plan and he issued a stream alteration permit. Um, moving ahead to July 20th, we had an on-site pre-bid meeting with potential contractors. And uh, one of the comments at the pre-bid meeting from the contractors was, there was a scour hole underneath the corner of the abutment and where we're going to, didn't plan to fill that in. And we did plan to fill that in. We put out an, an addendum to our um, bidding documents saying that that scour hole would be filled in. So that was included in the bid documents and on August 7th we opened bids. We had four bidders. The low bidder was Cold River Bridges at $192,000. There were, as I say, three other bidders. The high bidder was $244,000. So um, my engineer's opinion of probable construction cost to Greg at that time was a little bit over $191,000 plus a 20% contingency, so a total, including that contingency, of about $230,000. Um, I know that Bethel had a grant, has a grant, got a grant, mm -hmm. from, from, from uh, V-Transfer Class 2 Tan Highway uh, Road Improvement. So anyway, at that, at that point, my estimate, including contingencies, was $230,000. And our low bid was $192,000. On the basis of that information, um, Greg approved the bids, and we awarded the contract to Cold River. We had a pre-construction meeting on September 5th. Um, on September 21st, I get a call from Greg um, that the plans um, indicated that the foundation would be built on bedrock and that they'd gotten to elevation for part of the wing wall and they'd found no bedrock. So at that point, we need to think about, okay, we, we need, perhaps we need a change of design. So I proposed a change of design. Um, Ray showed it to Cold River. Um, and then there was a call from the contractor, Cold River, saying we want an on-site meeting. They were concerned about the redesign and how much that was going to cost. So after a meeting on-site and some more discussion, I came up with a second revision to the plans. Um, it was more like the original plans, but took into account the fact that we didn't reach bedrock and we were on it, what, glacial till and so forth. So we pr proceeded with that to the point where the contractor got about halfway done with the foundation for the wing wall. And they wondered at that point, as they got further away from the stream, whether they could raise the foundation up a little bit, hoping to su su um, save materials, save up time, get the project done sooner. So we decided to raise the back part of the wing wall up a little bit farther. Keeping in mind not to raise it too much um, so that future scour would not be a problem because that's a concern always when you have a wing wall next to a river. Um, so on, t on October 4th, we received, I received the first uh, change order from the contractor in the amount of $61,610. Um, 
that change order was for 300 extra yards of excavation, 300 extra yards of backfill, um, additional cost for their cofferdam having to be deeper than it was initially planned to be, um, 70 extra <coughs> cubic yards of Class C concrete, which is what the bottom of the foundation was being built out of, and some additional uh, cost for um, mobilization. Um, Greg and I talked about that first change order um, based on the fact that they didn't hit bedrock. We felt that it wasn't unreasonable what they were asking for. And then on October 16th, we received a second change order. They had made some modifications to that first change order and it had gone up to 66,626. And there was an additional change order. Change order number two was for additional um, cubic yards of class B concrete and reinforcing steel. Um, the reason for that second change order was that there were some errors in the calculations of the initial uh, quantity for class B concrete and the contractor had gone through those two particular quantities and come up with a different number. Um, the, the reason there was an error in the calculations <coughs> was I believe that when we made the change from a 24 foot long wing wall to a 42 foot long wing wall, those two particular um, material calculations either were based on the wrong set of plans or never got updated and so there was, there was an error in those calculations. So the total of change orders wound up being $88,300 more or less. Um, so on October 19th, we had a meeting, Greg, the town manager, um, uh, Jim Holler, who's the uh, contractor for Cold River, and myself to review both of these change orders and to see if there was any um, negotiating room in, in getting the change order costs down. Um, Cold River was pretty adamant that they had, they had expended this effort to get this done and they did not feel that any of those quantities were negotiable. They felt that they would do any, every penny of that. Um, and that pre pretty much brings us to where we are today. I will say that um, our original contract with the town of Bethel was for Dubais and King to be, to be done with the project at the point that the bids were ready to be received. Um, because of some of these issues, um, I've, I've had several more site visits and field visits to Bethel then we're originally in our contract trying to resolve some of these issues with overruns and um, but as it turns out we are quite a bit over what the original bid was. Um, it's not that those quantities were not part of the construction, it's that we did not alert the town that those quantities and those costs would be part of the construction at the end of bidding. And so the town unfortunately didn't know the extent of the cost that they were going to incur in this project. And for that, um, I apologize. Questions? Comments or comments? How <coughs> come uh, you, you didn't find that there was any bedrock? Well, we had one boring, and the result of that boring, um, they went to refusal, and the note on the boring log said that there was rock in the casing. And the other thing that I looked at was, there, so there was a scour hole underneath the abutment, and the state bridge inspectors had been keeping track of that scour hole. They'd taken pictures of it every two years when they did their, inspe their inspections. And I noticed that that scour hole was not getting any bigger. And I theorized that because of the boring, they went through refusal and we had rock in the casing, 
that that particular location had bedrock. And I thought that underneath the abutment, the fact that the scour hole was not getting any bigger indicated that we would have bedrock there. As it turned out, when they tore out the wing wall, the reason that scour hole was not getting any bigger was because the abutment footing had fallen off of the stem and it was sitting at a 90 degree angle behind the stem, basically blocking any water from getting in there and making that scour hole any bigger. So I went on the information that I had as far as soil borings. Um, you can take many soil borings and still get inconclusive information until you actually dig. It's hard to tell what you're gonna have for subsurface um, situation. But, um, you know, based on the one boring that I had and the information <coughs> and the 15 years or whatever of um, bridge inspection photos that I had, I was going on those two pieces of information. So you assume? Excuse me? You assume? No. I assume. Yes. Was that one boring done when it was back at a 24 foot? It was at, done. At the original design as opposed to the 42 foot? Um, it was done in the area, um, well, it would have been done in the area closer to the road anyway, because it, it, it was as far as really a boring crew could, could get to. Um, you couldn't really have gotten a boring like down over the bank um, where the end of the wing wall could have been accessible. Was. It wasn't, yeah. So you wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be standard practice to do you know, a few different borings along the length of the wing well, wall? Well, I mean, standard practice would usually be one boring per substructure unit. And we're, we're really only building part of one substructure unit and that we were only building the wing wall. Um, we weren't building the abutment or the other wing wall. Um, more information would have been better. On the other hand, more information would have cost more, too. Um, as it wound up, it cost much more. Not to have the information, right? but hindsight is twenty twenty. You don't know that when you're developing the project. So I guess the question is: any, anybody else on the board have any other questions? Um, so I guess the questions that I had had was: um, I was on the original board in fall of two thousand sixteen when when this was um, brought to us. Um, at that time, the, the board had made an approval to go ahead with the project based upon uh, engineering costs of around $25,000. That was the initial proposal that was given to the town from the <coughs> board. Um, the, so we were looking at in, engineering $25,000 based on a project that we said was in the $180,000 uh, estimate, um, which I had brought up at that time based on, on my years of experience in, in working in the field of construction, um, I had felt that the, the PE cost uh, to ratio for the project was kind of high. Um, you know, that was in the 15% area. Um, but, you know, we understood that, you know, based on smaller jobs, sometimes the PE uh, percentage is a little higher. Um, but then to follow back up, we got to March of 2017 um, and then Dubois and King had come back to us again with that the estimated $25,000 for PE was now going to be 50000 So, you know, we, inc we had a 100% increase in cost in PE um, to engineer this um, wing, wing wall for us. Um, so at that time, in order for us to move forward with the project, um, well, was one, the town either coming up with more money to pay for the extra PE process um, so we didn't have to delay it, or we ended up partnering with uh, VTrans again and getting a second um, uh, grant to do that bridge. So uh, even though we weren't very happy in having to pay double of what we thought we were going to have to pay for PE and cost, uh, we did so under the um, under the premises that we were getting, um, making up for that in the in the grant process. So then we, you know, we've been uh, Greg's been um, very transparent with us uh, through the process um, through select board meetings. So we've been kind of up to up to date with how the project was going, and 
And then I guess we were just kind of disappointed to hear that, you know, that the PAing process that doubled in cost um, now kind of failed us when both on the technical end of things as well as the financial end of things. So, um, I mean, we, none of us here are PEs and that's why we don't put our stamp on that project, but we do, however, contract, in this case, Dubois and King, to do that work for us. Um, in this case, which was 100% higher than what we thought it was gonna be. Um, just to turn into, at the end of the day, um, you know, the project ended up being almost 50% over value um, than where we're at. So, rather than bid amount. Right. Um, I mean, the bid amount there came in. There should always really be a contingency, and even when you have a bid amount, because um, you need to have plan for some unexpected cost, I think, in any construction project. So, when I quoted to Greg, like our final estimate of 192000 I also said that, that we had included a contingency of 20% because mm -hmm. unexpected costs will come up. But you are correct that overall, I don't know, 88,000 on 192,000, whatever, whatever that percentage is, it's, it's a fair, fairly large amount. Right. I mean, and, I mean, the original contract sum that we entered into agreement with, with Colbert Bridges, was very close to the estimated um, amount I had my notes here. The original budget was 128,000. Well, to go back, the original budget was 120, 189,000 plus the 25,000 at PE cost, and then the PE cost went to 50,700. Um, but now, you know, the the contract was entered at 192,000. That ended up turning into 281,000. So. Um, you know, to a, to a town of our size, that's a substantial amount of money, um, which was about $90,000 that had to come directly out of our pocket for, for what we feel is <coughs> Du Bois and King's um, issue. Um, I mean, some, some of it does come with, you know, with some of the design having to change, but at the same time, uh, which we take responsibility for, if the design has to change based upon, um, you know, the flow, the stream, and whatnot, but but on the on the part of technical engineering it as well as the financial uh, quantity and the things, if, you know, you know, I guess the way I'm not going to talk for the other board members, but the way I feel is is if had the financial quantities been correct, it would have given the town the opportunity to reject the things. <coughs> or delay the project and find other sources. Um, and, and by not having that information that we pay you to do, um, the town was, was not able to use that option. Mm -hmm. um, other now having to dig through other coffers to, to pay for that. Um, I know, you know, in certain areas of, you know, construction, there are errors and emissions clauses. And I guess, you know, at this point, my, my question is, what is Dubois and King willing to do for the town of Bethel? I don't know how the other board members feel, but. Well, it's just, it's a big pill for the town to swallow. You know, and we're, we're going through some real financial challenges <laughs> in the last couple of years and in the in incoming next few years with the water systems and our other systems that haven't functioned. And it's a hard one to explain when I get stopped on the street and people. I want to know how we can how we, how we can justify doing that. I'm a contractor myself, so it's difficult for me to go into a, a project and, and give them the bid, you know, based on my best guesstimate. And I always have a you know, an, a, a side note that says, you know, it's based on visual inspection at this point, and any anything that's found afterwards is billable at whatever rate. And, you know, I always have that clause in there. And it seems like we didn't have that option um, on this particular contract. So it's, you know, I, how do I explain it? You know, when, when the guy on the street stops me and says, hey, <laughs> what's, you know, it's considerably more, and where's that money gonna come from? 
and and I, you know we understand that there are um, that there you know there's always going to be human error related to anything and you know that's why you do have you know budgets that are rounded or or have um, you know estimates that add you know 10 percent to it or something like that but you know in this case to be looking at you know 47 percent over budget um, is a you know substantial percentage on loan cost for the structure that we were trying to build here um, I, I mean Greg I don't I mean, feel free to chime in whatever uh, no, you is that the point but I mean what is what is Dubois I mean Dubois and King probably have talked about this behind closed doors uh, we have we have discussed it and our position is that the the quantities and the um, need to go deeper for the footing or or to change the footing because of um, the bedrock not being there. While it would have been nice if we could have told the town that ahead of time so they would have known um, what they were financially um, going to be liable for. Um, those quantities were there regardless of whether the, the town knew about them at bidding or found out about them later. The, the design probably, the, co the overall cost probably wouldn't have changed, but we would have known at the time of bidding what the overall cost was going to be, and it's unfortunate that you didn't. I'm not sure what the town could have done differently and still keep that bridge in service. The, um, the wing wall issue had been documented by bridge inspectors over a number of years and it seemed to be sort of continuing to move the top part of it. Obviously something needed to be done and I agree that it's unfortunate that the town didn't have the opportunity to say, wait a minute, $280,000, $281,000 is too much, we need to come up with a different option. Um, but at that point, you would also be spending more engineering money to come up with a different option. Um, and I don't know that, that you would have come up with um, an option that was any cheaper. But we, we can't know that because we can't go back there and do it over again. I guess I'll just add to that. Is what we do is we work for a lot of municipalities. I, we take this very seriously because we do have our opinions out there in so many municipalities, so it's not something we're viewing as your problem and not something we're doing. Um, as we found our mistakes, uh, Martha started to begin. It's, it's once that start, once we started realizing what was occurring with the quantities, the, the timer stopped. Everything we've done since then, uh, the redesigns, all of the meetings, that's all been completely off the clock. It's, that's, that's our contribution. We made a mistake and we fixed it. You know, just the, the bigger picture costs, you know, we weren't, a lot of times when you're talking about errors and omissions, you're talking about something that was done inappropriately, then it fell. So you incurred additional cost because of the action. In this case, and that's, that's where Martha was going, is that was always there. Unfortunately, we did take away your ability to make the decisions on, on that, on whether to move forward or not. And that's, that's the part that's certainly frustrating to us as, as well as you. The, the geotech, uh, the way Martha was describing, it's pretty much the standard of care as you take the borings and then you're looking for other things. Is there a ledge outcrop or um, there's always a certain amount of inherent risk of do, dealing with geotech anyway because you just, you don't know what's under the ground. And unfortunately in this case, it, it, it didn't work to our favor. Um, this isn't, if I was looking at 10 of these projects out through there and looking that we had multiple pieces that we were looking at, um, that's not outside of what I would expect on this type of project. So would you say on average, the, to piggyback on that comment then, so you're willing to say that being that this wasn't outside of that, then a project running over 47% is average? 
Not, not average and not even typical. Um, geotech is more of a, an art than a science as far as the understanding of the ground based on just a few data points. So as we're looking at, at founding a, a, a foundation of a bridge, now typically we're dealing with a whole bridge, so you're doing almost quarter points. You have more data points. With an isolated piece, um, there were some access issues where how many, how many of these were you going to get in the proper location? So in this case, I, I think you probably find most engineers would be approaching this would have done just one more. And the scour hole was giving us the type of evidence that what we were seeing from the boring seemed reasonable. And it's, um, if you go through an entire career, you can remember a few of these. Um, it's not something commonplace. It's not some extra we put on every single job. Um, I probably had four of them in 30 years that really you just weren't able to predict based on all the other evidence you were looking at. But that is, in fact, what an engineer does, is look at the, the proponents of the evidence in, in, in front of you and make your best decision. And that's, so the geotech is a little bit different because I, I think we interpreted the evidence we had in front of us and unfortunately that wasn't the case. And I guess it doesn't matter now, it's you know, water over the bridge, but the, um, <laughs> um, the change orders that were um, accepted from the contractor, how, how were those how were those presented from the contractor? You know, did you ask for, um, you know, typically working for the state of Vermont, let's say, they'll ask you for your cost plus, you know, so you have to show them your cost, then you get 10% or 15% depending on subcontractor or not. How was that determined in this case? So the contractor, Cold River Bridges, um, he, he plotted up revised sections and did average end areas for the materials that he was asking for um, additional uh, quantities on. And he also made some modifications to the way he was doing those sections in order to basically save the town of Bethel some money. Because usually you would come up from the back of the footing, you would come up at a one-on-one -on -one angle and the material included above that angle would be either excavation or backfill. The fact that they had to go down deeper, he, he took that, um, that area that, that was dead, dead deeper and he um, basically moved his slope line up. So he did average end area, he showed us his calculations, he showed us his sections, um, and it was based on actual in-place quantities from those sections based on changes of the footing elevations and excavation limits. Um, so, so essentially he took the quantity and that was to the contract unit price? Yes, he did. Yeah, exactly. Didn't change the and he verified with the, um, like where we borrowed the weight, <coughs> the tickets, and then the concrete and the trip tickets and all that. So we verified the quantities based on the, what was actually sent to the site. He, well, I get did, that, but he, did, he also pointed out to me that there is a clause, and we're, base, we're basing our items on um, VTrans' standard specifications. He did point out to me that there's a clause in there. If you go a certain extra depth below, that you're allowed a premium, basically a raised unit price, and he wasn't charging um, the town of Bethel that, which didn't help, I've got to say, well, it helped because he might have been entitled to that, but he wasn't claiming it because he realized that the town of Bethel was already in a bad place for the cost of this project. Um, so he for, agreed to forego that premium cost for additional material and just based it on the um, contract prices. I'm curious, you mentioned that you know you had found, found an error and you corrected it and the clock was off at that point in time. But there was an additional $25,000 in engineering costs above, right? We came back. That was prior to getting to the, to the bid. To get place. to that, that was point. negotiated before we even completed the. It went from 25 to 50. 
Yeah. And that was before this. That was before. Yeah. Before, before the original design. Before the okay. Okay. Sometime, sometime ago, Duke Voice and King, I believe they did studies on a number of bridges in town, and those each had their own unit costs. When I came back in front of the board, when we finally got to the point of the, what we call final design on this, um, there were a lot of different elements. Normally, if you were designing a whole bridge, you look at the survey of the whole bridge, you look at the hydraulics of the whole bridge. In this case, where you're doing a quarter, it feels like you should have a reduced price on you paying quarter of all those, but unfortunately, to do the analysis, you need to do the analysis of the whole bridge. And that's, that's what really made the numbers look funny, because we, actually, our design cost was pretty compatible with it ultimately was, just because there was a lot of different bases you had to touch base with the permanent agencies and such. But when Jen said they were off the clock, it's that construction services was an optional part of the contract, and, and Bethel chose not to pick up that optional part of the contract. Greg said, no, I can handle the construction aspect. But some of this stuff was not just construction, it was change of design, and that, and that that should be on us, but we're not, we haven't been charging for any of that because of the errors that in, in calculation and quantity. Um, so we haven't been charging since um, the bidding, basically. Any site visits, any um, field visits, this is a visit here. We're, we're using it to make amends, basically. It's not really a one-to-one -one of we made the mistake and then we fixed it. There's a little bit of work outside that we just said, you know, that's that's where we're finding the balance between we made an error and we're trying to make amends. Well, I mean, I, I guess just to sum it up, I mean, um, I mean, your firm in this case was uh, recommended to us and we didn't put this out to bid. Um, for the PE costs, so, um, and and then from it to go, you know, like we just said, you know, a certain amount it doubled, just in PE costs, and then when we're building it, we're forty-seven percent over based on whatever the factors are, you know, it, it's it's um, a bit of a tough pill for us to swallow, as well as, you know, we're pretty discouraged in in regards to the next time whatever project it is that we do. You know, um, you know, in the past we've just signed you up to do work. You know, maybe down the road it'll end up being bid out or, or, or not being used. Or you know, so um, I'm a little disappointed that Du Bois and King isn't willing to do more than what they have done um, in regards to this. But I mean, at this point, there's nothing else to do. I can say, but but we appreciate you coming in yeah. this evening and um, at least coming in. Uh, facing the firing squad rather than <laughs> not, so. Uh, we certainly apologize for this situation and, and do appreciate the opportunity to come in front. Um, it's not a situation we like it like any more than we do, so. We will we'll remember it. So, do we have anything else on board? Are we good? Or no. over time here on the appointment, so. Appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Assuming you must be with VTrans in the back. Yeah, absolutely. From one bridge to the other. Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go tonight? Yeah. No. Yeah, geez, that was a tough yeah. one to, to follow in. Yeah. Um, well, this is a bridge that isn't built yet. Um, I'm sure you're all relatively familiar with Bridge 38 on your way to 12 North. Pretty obvious it needs to get replaced. Um, that's a full replacement, so it's not a, it's not necessarily a, a quick job. Um, but the good news for the town of Bethel is that they're going to construct the new bridge right next to the existing one. That way to keep traffic open and not cause great pains. Right. Um, in order for us to construct the project, we need to obtain rights from the town. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we're actually looking to do a uh, fee purchase of, um, of some land as well. This is a big project. Um, so the, in the interesting part about this is that the town actually has three parcels that's affected. Um, Two of them being roads. So the town owns one parcel, but then it's bisected by an ancient road or an old road, as you would say. And then 
Uh, the other road, Gilead Brook Road, uh, of course, is, is town land too. Um, so what I did is I have, there's two parts that we can look at. There's first the plans, which... Yeah, they've got the drawings. <laughs> yep, all right, perfect, yeah, so... You might tell them which one to map it on, you know, it's... Yep, exactly, I mean, um, great, yours are colored, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, perfect. Yeah, so, and I tried to keep the same colors. Uh, I lost the files in the fire, so I had to recreate that. Um, Okay, so the fee taking, that's usually the first most important question. So you'll see that if you're looking at parcel number four, whether it's the highlighted one or not, parcel number four would be this guy. And you'll see the very first two shaded in gray and outlined in red. If you go ahead and if you flip the page, you'll see that, so as I said, it's funky because there's a road, so it kind of it gets cut off right in the middle. But you'll see parcel four ranges from if you look on your bottom right, you'll see it's called sheet five. And then if you flip, you'll see it continues on to your bottom right, sheet six. Um, Mine's up Fine. Nope, we're good. Oh, we'll do that. And so, all right, so backing up to the fee taking, that is the stuff that's in red, shaded, that's outlined in red, shaded and in gray. And the, if you were to flip back onto page five, you can see that the fee taking is right along the easterly side of the road. And what we're doing is we're widening the approach to the whole bridge. And so that's why we're doing that. As you're looking at page five, you'll see the yellow, which is on top. The yellow is called all rights, titles, and interests. And um, although it's not the easiest thing to explain, it's basically what the state already owns to the center line. So it's the existing right of way. And what we're trying to do is we, we try and get that from everybody throughout the whole project so that we do in fact own the whole road, whether we do or don't. And so that's, that's what the yellow is. It's kind of a clean up, isn't it? Exactly, it's yeah, just to clean the title clean of the road, you know, because you just never know with how, how old and how long these deeds go back. And so then you can see, as you're looking at it, you can see that parcel five kind of starts, it starts because it's a, it's a road What's the name of that road again, Greg? The, um, the, the, one? the kiosk uh, is on? So. Spring Hall. Spring Hall. Oh, that's not yes. right. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, so that's where And so you can see, see that, yeah, you can see, so parcel four is really from here to here, but because Spring Hollow Road goes like that, it goes in between. So that creates another, a second parcel, which is called parcel five. So, <laughs> it's a kid. So it's, it's essentially splitting parcel four. It does. It splits parcel four, exactly. And so parcel five is, if you flip, we have parcel five. Mm -hmm. And so that has a tiny fee taking in it too. And that's 0.14 acres, so just over a tenth of an acre. And that's right away. That's the right of way piece, isn't it? Uh, that is a fee taking on parcel five. I know it's a lot to look through, I apologize. <laughs> So, yes, and so basically, yep, exactly, there's a, that's an eight. You have to look through, right? That's why it's, it's because it's three parcels, it creates yeah. all this paperwork, which makes it a little harder to interpret at the end of the day. There's so much flip. You could get these engineers talking to you, and they can just spin your head around with their buzzwords and stuff, and I'm try, I try not to do that to people. We went through this last June before, I believe. Yeah, I tried. I'm better at it now. No, no, but we did. <laughs> there was a few questions I believe that we were yep. asking about, and I think you probably solved them. We, we did. I yeah, think the biggest the biggest question that we had was uh, on the deed, we have a FEMA. FEMA has rights to one of the parcels, and so we just need to make sure that to stay within that, yeah, we that weren't building any structures, and we're not. Right. Uh, we yeah. are taking and removing the kiosk during the process of conversation construction and then replacing it. But that doesn't put anyone in a bad position or violate it any rules. It doesn't change the access down to that area. No, nope. in fact, we'll, re we'll rebuild it. Right, so, and, and even though the maintenance agreement is not something we're looking to sign as this part of the process, the way that Bethel retains their rights is that now that we own this parcel of Spring Hollow Road, 
we're actually going to give you a maintenance agreement so the town can still maintain it. So we're taking the rights from you, buying the land, but then we're giving you the rights right back so you can maintain it and get down to whatever's down there. And that's exactly what's happening on Parcel 8, which is Gilead Brook. Mm -hmm. So on Parcel 8, the impacts are really minimal because there's just that idea of we want to own um, an approach. And then, yeah, see, that's uh, right here, this guy. Yeah, right here. So we're, we're asking for a temporary approach. Yep. So that's during construction, we can maintain your road, so yep. you don't have to do it. And then a permanent right to maintain the guardrails. That's the big, ugly green lines I do. Mm -hmm. And that obviously, so if someone decides to put their car into it, the transit the district will come in and fix it and not have to obtain permission every time. So how does that impact the property owners? There's a, there was a private well, there's the old schoolhouse, right? Oh there. yeah, we took a lot from him. He lost about an acre. Yeah, we paid him about, yeah, we paid, we, he did all right. Yeah. We came to good terms but, on, but because he's going to be right in the middle of the construction. Yeah, he's impacted. And his house is going to shoot. Yep, right now he's, the bank that holds his mortgage is re rephrasing the property to make sure that they don't have any money up, which is part of the process. So. Um, so yeah, so those are the three parcels, and that's how it's affected. Um, and of course, with the way engineers work, they decided a little while ago that my deadline was at the end of the month. So we're here. <laughs> um, but Greg and I, and Greg's been great. We've been talking openly for about a year and a half. As I said, the files walked away on me when we lost them in the, in the fire at the National Life Building, so I didn't have this product on my desk for months. And so then it came back. <laughs> now, now I'm here. Uh, but yeah, I'm welcome to answer any other questions if someone has. So I think our biggest concern through this process was more um, you know, protecting the Spring Hollow piece that we have down there. Um, how would that look during construction? And how would that look after construction? I think was so after, probably our two biggest questions. Yep. After the road is going to be rebuilt to uh, its current state or better, mm -hmm. so the access. So as, and that goes as far as uh, the rights that we're taking. Yeah. Um, during, I don't see any fences at all. So There's during, no fences. during construction activities, um, it's going to be residents an open will area. have it's, full access to. It's going to be an op open area. It's not fenced off. No, so. Not I would imagine they can stage there. Yeah, because you don't really know. Room. See, that's the yeah, thing, Greg. Right, I so. think you're right because see how they're taking this access. Yeah, they're using that to get under. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have access probably during part of construction because it's. I mean, it's a construction project. They're most likely going to stage your equipment and, and materials there. Mm -hmm. And that'll come and go. Well, but what I mean is they bought the Davis property for, it, after the fact. Yes, we'll get to it. Oh yeah, that road doesn't change. They're going to put it back just the way it is. Right. It'll yeah. just be owned by them and maintained by us. So that we can yeah, but our it. Spring Hollow. Our Spring Hollow section is, is off of these limits. Right. So during construction, you're not going to... Well, I'm talking that. about the, the entrance and the roadway to get down to Spring Hollow currently. That that won't... They're going to have... That won't be... That people still have access to get down there because... Yep, well, half... Because the half construction limits there. don't go all the way down into... Right, the, there's a gate there now, and I think the gate... Stays. Yeah. But so I, think, not going I, I, I think, are you asking if there's going to be access to that area down there for the construction project? Right. That I don't know. Be well, I mean, just looking at what the temporary construction what the rights limits, the, limits the rights are. Yep, 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 absolutely. I mean, our facility, that's the whole road right You know, here. if you look at the picnic tables and stuff, that's down here. Right. You know, so will, will folks still have access to this? Uh, I, I can actually, I don't know that. You know, I mean, that during construction. Or if not, can a note be yeah. put in during there construction, for purposes During that construction, I'm hesitant to say yes, right. just yeah. because of the liability and the, yeah. you know, speaking from a contractor's point of view or, you know, a private landowner. Um, I would say, I would suggest no. Okay. But that's really going to be, you know, a contractor to contractor, you know, whoever decides to do it and how they how they end up taking the approach. So that's a that's a question that is safe safer for me to say no, not knowing how when the rubber hits the road, how they're gonna do it. Because right, they're gonna be coming down through Yeah, you could with, you could see here that what they're doing is that they're gonna plan to use this and then right. use that yeah. all to get underneath to where they're building the new right. piers. Right. Which is a good question and that and that just you know, the prudent answer would have to be that um, and about Limited how long activities. would the construction activities take place, or what would we figure? I have that on a piece of paper somewhere. Spring 19 to fall of 20. 
But again, that's the advantage of having the bridge built right next to the existing one is that traffic will stay. Usually those projects, and that includes everything from moving utilities to you know, the final coat of pavement. So that, you know, you might only be doing utilities from now until the fall, or, you know, until the summer, and then okay. who knows. So uh, not losing the flow of traffic is usually the hardest deterring factor against the schedule. So we'd have to get information out to the public knowing that that period sure. of time. Well, VTrans will hold a public meeting um, when the bid's awarded and stuff like that, where the contractor who gets the bid will be there as well. So all the all the involved parties have all been notified, but they all know what's going on, all the people involved in the project. So now you have the rest of the taxpayers in town, your commuters and stuff like that. But and what we could do, I, I'm assuming that v probably has a, an active link or something that they show kind of the progress of the project and give updates on the progress. Yep, absolutely. Not to mention that there's, we, a, there's an on-site uh, engineer uh, with a contractor, and then there's an on-site engineer for v -trans. And, and, and those people make sure we can link there, put their link on our website or on our Facebook page so people yep. can access it. I can that. send you right away the link to this guy, which is really informative. We call it the fact sheet, and that'll, that'll even get you linked to the plans if someone was so oh, yeah. interested yeah. in that far. But this that. explains the old bridge versus the new bridge yeah. and the why we're doing this bridge. Yeah, if you can send that, I'll put it on my website. Keep, yeah. keep that. I, I mean, I think, we all, send you send me I think we all will agree that the bridge. Of course, that was probably the only bridge that was left standing after Irene, but <laughs> out of all of them, that Still one. Still doing Irene projects, so uh, look at it, you know? It's crazy. I think that's the only one that we haven't rebuilt, but... Uh, so is there a plan to do anything with the paving of that bridge now? No, it's already no, that thing is, that's, that's probably going to fall it's apart already, until they're done. It's already oh, like that would this. be the... Uh, what what would... Um, it's going to be... That's going to be hell. The yeah. existing pave... I mean, that section of road is only paved so far, right? Currently? That um, access um, going uh, down into our facility. Spring yeah, Hollow. Spring Hall. Is it paved actually. all the way or just, just no, a no, portion no, of it? No, no, no. no. Yeah, I don't like, think it's paved. I think it's only it's paved like 25 feet. Is it or is it paved? Yeah, just an acre. Mm -hmm. It's only paved right I think it's just paved to the, the gate, isn't it? No. It was paved no, at one no. point, but no. it's all broken up. It's only paved like think, to the gate. I think that's accurate. Well, they're required to put it back either as good or better. Yep. So it'll be paved up to the gate or yeah, whatever. Yeah, most, you guys are most likely the apron's going to come okay. out. And then, we'll have, the and then afterwards it'll be... Yeah, yeah, it's it's anyway, better than holding And then after the project's completed, it'll have the same access as it it'll, always has. Yeah, in that or better. It'll look the same. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And can you just normal construction... Yep. Yeah, sure. and, 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 be, and because because the road is moving a little bit with the new bridge, we have to enter one of those maintenance agreements for your ability to get onto the Gilead Brook. So you'll be crossing part of V Transit Route 12 in order to do it. But that's just the back and forth. Of it. We're just sort of trading. Yeah, absolutely. I think our big question was was the Spring Hollow. Yeah. Yeah. All that yeah. You know, I mean, if you think about other than people who are directly impacted by the projects who are on it, that's you know public interest. So that makes sense. I think uh, anybody else on the board have any other questions? No, I don't. Do you need them to sign these or do guys sign them? So whoever has signatory power, so it doesn't really matter. They can <coughs> give me that or because I've yep, got and I can tell I forgot to tell the board the good part. Do you get compensated for this? Jeff knows he was part of the process. So for the big impacts it's four thousand two hundred and fifty and then you'll have one more for 1550 and then another one for 900 So, little Dubois and King money coming back your way. Well, we need about another 80000 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. have to do better than that. <laughs> yeah. So, ain't over yet. <laughs> so, yeah, what will happen? Which are, well, <laughs> we gotta, do you guys want to sign these, or would you rather just... We can uh, make a motion to have you sign it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Okay. I make a motion that Greg signs the bridge 33. Bridge 33. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Perfect. Um, thank you. Uh, what the heck was I about to say? Oh yeah, we just we had a bridge go out in my town up north, and what happened was um, the game warden goes down to check someone's fishing license, and he at the bridge and he didn't like it. So he calls in the district and the district shuts down our bridge. So my little town of 1,600 people just had to foot $140,000 just to put a temporary bridge on top to now apply for these V-trans loans that you had to get for your second PE cost. Like, 
But those, that could kill a little town like me, you know? I got a $2 million budget, including this. Yeah, this so requires a about us. I'm a notary, so I'll ask you if you was free. I'm also a notary. Oh, there you go. You're good. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I love the fact Perfect. that he's like, oh, yeah. you're the yeah. one. But he's a notary, he's like, I'm a notary. All right, go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. 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 What was that? Dated today. Dated today, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So there's, a, there's original and a duplicate for each parcel. Okay, so there's. Yep. There we go. And there's my duplicate. Beautiful, yep. So we can have the right with the other. Yeah. Yeah. What's our next project type of proportion here? We're not going to build a playground. <laughs> yeah. Who's your engineer on this project? No one yet. Oh, well, they were. Only a V trans engineer. They were moving back. No, no. Someone will have to. I saw her. She was like. Yeah. You guys are PE oh, in it as well? Rankin. Uh, well, we'll have a, a, a V trans engineer, and then when the contract goes out to the construction company, they'll have an on site engineer as well. So ours is named Carolyn, and her information's on that sheet I gave Greg. Now we're just joking. She's a, she's, a, she's a firecracker. If you have any questions, give her a call. She's awesome. All right. Yeah. Um, I would just be facetious. I know, Mom. Still in turns. So did you guys have that conversation about the boy and then you had to bring him back in here and have the conversation first again, time. huh? Our first time with that. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Well, we thank you for coming in. I know, I mean, we, we only had just really what we thought was just pretty simple questions in regards to the access. Yeah, you guys there. are great. But it gets a little more complicated when we had the FEMA buyout piece and yeah. can, can you even take that you absolutely know? and i mean not that we, not that, that we don't just, want it but we just don't know if we can even do it and so you guys were going to speak with the administrator the local FEMA administrator right i did it you're all yep. good there right clear i could send you that email tomorrow you're good yeah um yeah you know, just have that documentation just oh yeah absolutely yeah i mean it's it's tough there's a lot of times whether we take a, a portion of someone's land who's in current use or there's just these little triggers sometimes that create more work for property owners than you wish it was worth sometimes, you know? Good. Not like the old days, isn't it? Where you just take it? <laughs> I'll just take it. Well, that's bad. <laughs> like the railroad yeah, phenomenal awesome. today. If you were a railroad. Oh, perfect yeah. time. <laughs> Back in the railroad yeah, days. Just take uh, it. Uh, it's February 19th, yeah. yeah. So is the project on, uh, on, well, on is schedule. everything going to be on pace to be bid? It's up to me to get my job done by the end of the month to keep it on schedule. Yeah. And right now, White River Ambulance is on it, so they're signing tomorrow at their meeting. And then I'm just discussing some trees with the neighbors. Because we talked about that bridge prior to the Route 12 job being done. Oh, this, this and far, then when, far and then, <clears throat> my employment with V-Trans. And then when... <laughs> you guys made a lot with this logo. And then when Route 12 was done three years ago, we potentially didn't pave that bridge because this bridge is going to be done. Yeah, it's right on the People have been driving yeah. over this bridge for two and a half years now, you know. Yeah, that's why we were joking to see how long our temporary bridge on School Street is going to last <laughs> until we get the funding from someone else. <laughs> so what do you want that to say? All right, all right. Let's see. Oh, it's hers. Fun. Yeah, you can call the guys in for her. Oh, okay. Knowledge. You'll be he working there pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. I hit his. <laughs> <laughs> your punishment. Yeah. Yeah. I bet I can do fifty pounds. <laughs> <different people. laughs> <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 You all sat there, Greg? I believe so. Thank okay, you. thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll send you off an email tomorrow if you want, and I'll get me in all the links, all that stuff. Okay. For the public information. Do you have any idea when I'm going to schedule that? The public information. A lot of appointments tonight. Yeah. 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 Usually we only have maybe one. You, have a you know. Uh, we don't have an actual schedule, right? <laughs> hey, we're moving through it. We're, we're about on track on time, you know. <clears throat> you know, about 15 minutes. Seven thirty, right? <clears throat> Not yet. We're due for a couple. Of I think we're good. Duplicates are yours. Right. Yeah. Yep. Depends so on how fast good. we get to the budget. Parcel five, parcel four, parcel eight. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy Thank New Year. You. Thanks for coming. I won't come here for you. So we we are up to our budget discussion. And Therese is here. She's got the um, the last sections of our budget put together. So we have a pretty much a complete rough draft budget. Um, I think you should be, you know, I think it's good, we happy. Um, <coughs> the revenue, and I think we're going to, we'll start at the municipal office, right? Isn't that where we, I think we did, right. yeah, can we talk some public yep. places, because I know the Lisa and Flowers are there, so I made that change to make yep. a note. Um, so I think that municipal offices is pretty straightforward, there's nothing, um, Crazy here, you do see, um, well, it's the same price, but we did budget of the town clerk needs a new computer. Um, Therese, can we do, we got three new computers now we need. One for the, the clerk, and one for the fire department, and one for the constable. Town, um, and the constable, constable. yeah. And the constable, whatever. Can we try to put something in? Are they all the same, or are they different? I don't, I, have, I would not speak to the constable, but as far as the fire and the Clerk, they could be similar. I, thought was, I think there was one unless, in the no, the highway too. Yeah. Unless my guess might be that Dave, so that the fire, the highway, they might need tough books. Like if they're looking for laptops, a tough book is just a heavier duty. They may be looking for that. I know that Pam will be looking for a desktop. But what we can do is you can go out. Sometimes a state contract through they have through Dell. Piggy bank on them. Mm. And frankly, sometimes but, you just get. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. just and I guess it depends on what you need for software and stuff. But yeah. well, yeah. for Nemrick, for the municipal office, Cam would need you know Microsoft would be Word, a uh, Microsoft Office, excuse me, not Word. But um, and Nemrick is already software we've already purchased, so she the you only know, she would need these specialty software on hers. And I'm assuming you know in this day and age, don't they all pretty much come loaded with Microsoft Office? Because mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm assuming that's what the fire is on. Not anymore. Not anymore. They're about, about 150 bucks. Yeah. You know, so if now you they. You buy a package, <coughs> you can yeah. buy Microsoft Office for X amount of computers, and that gives you like one copy, but they give you like four keys, you mm -hmm. know, so that yeah. you can do it. So, yeah, we'll certainly look to consolidate. But as far as the constable goes, I, I wouldn't hazard a guess with that. I don't, I don't know what they're called for specialty software or not. And just a clarification from the last meeting, I said that uh, that that the portion for the computer that was put into the Costco's budget was a third. That's incorrect. It's a half. So we would. So Rochester already has a computer and everything for him. So they refused to pay their third or a third of the computer. So that cost. What kind of computer is that? Because it's. That's I mean, all the software, everything that goes along with it. I mean, if, it. if it's a half, it's a forty-six hundred dollars computer. I mean, yeah, you can get yourself a really nice notebook, right? Well, it's a tough you know, book for eight hundred bucks. Well, plus, I mean, really some nice. Some of those one. have docking stations, <clears throat> so that you know, sometimes they, those have docking stations, so they can go from the cruiser to the office. Yeah. So sometimes they're a little bit more expensive. At least that's my experience. Well, it's a tough book. I, he wants a tough book. Whether it has a docking station, it might, but it's it's got a mounting thing in this he car, but. Right. Um, but that's the cost for a tough book with all the software and everything hmm. he came up with. Now we can find it for cheaper yeah. than that. I, I looked. Ooh. You can find it for $2,000 for a decent tough book. If you want just a regular tablet or a, a, a regular laptop, yeah. we don't want to spend that. No, but, and the state okay. usually has a contract with somebody. Yeah. You can call yeah. It, so. But I'm sure it to be somewhat tough, you know, so that it's yeah. tough enough that they can handle it. Around a little bit, but. And I know the fire one leaves the station, so it's kind of back and forth. So yeah. you definitely don't want something delicate, but I'm <laughs> sure we can, you know, come time you buy them all at once, or hopefully. Um, so, you know, we need a fax machine, but we still cut the budget, reduce the budget by $200 there. Um, there is a, I did budget, uh, we budget under office furniture. A 50% match for the VLCD passive grant is included in there. Um, because Pam wants a standing desk, and so, but that's not that it's not six hundred dollars. We also needed room for other office furniture just in case we need it. But 
what you'll see overall is there's a significant savings in municipal office um, because we downsize an employee, so with that goes wages as well as uh, insurance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that we did include in here this year is we're separating out postage because that's been a bit of a issue. Water and sewer needs to pay for their own postage and their own envelopes and their own, they do their billing, so we're moving that out. We also like postage machine, so it's just gonna be easier to deal with, so we will buy pre-done envelopes for taxes um, that will come out of the general fund budget, water, sewer, pay for their own billing things, and then we'll have a meter. And, and I found one, so it's uh, pretty inexpensive, and it'll just be nicer for us to manage Save instead of having labor. to go to the post office yeah. to get stamps. And, you know. Save on labor a lot. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a nightmare. So, um, so if, I don't know if you have any specific questions on the municipal budget. That seems pretty, municipal office budget seems pretty straightforward to me, but do you have any questions? There's yep. two copier <coughs> categories. There's one for, and one's for rental. Yeah, the one specifically for the lease, that's in the clerk's office, and the other one is just what we use for um, paper and, right. and toner and stuff. We yeah. own that okay. one now, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the other one, even the one we lease, we have to pay for a copy for maintenance and things like that. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah. Cost yeah. on top of the lease. Yeah. Good with that. You want to go on to the town hall? Sure. Yeah. So, town hall um, budget obviously is down a little bit, and that's because we had the building repair line item was dropped uh, or not reduced. Um, so, we do have some wages in here for people to maintain town hall. We're also going to see, you will see in the next iteration of this a little bit more of a change because we use someone to salt and shovel out these stairs down here. So, we've been coding it to building maintenance in the past. But we're going to move that into wages come the next year, and that's only 600 bucks, I think, six eight hundred dollars. So you'll see that in the draft that you'll get next time. Um, so insurance, electricity, telephone, building repairs, obviously you still have Tasco, fire extinguishers, your elevator inspection, custodial, mm -hmm. all those good things. But there obviously is a reduction of um, due to is, is there maintenance on the clock. Yes, like there a maintenance is. contract. Yep, he comes it's in. It's time. once a year for two hundred ninety-five dollars. <laughs> yeah, we make two hundred ninety-five dollars. Yeah, yeah. 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 expensive. Yeah, expensive. Yeah, two hundred ninety-five dollars a year. So that's the that's what's in here. And obviously, there's a bigger repair you cover under. Oh, okay. That's just, and, and no he was actually contract. just here. Yep. Um. <clears throat> so he he increased a little bit. And of course, too, don't forget some of this. You do have revenue for when it's rented, but if it's rented a lot, you're gonna use more heat, and so there's a couple things like that that you're looking at. Um, town officials, you can see the pay is all the same here, unless you guys wanna increase your budget and make more than 200. And PS, uh, across the table, so Paul, you can come by <coughs> tomorrow, and your pay is in there, your stipends are all in this <coughs> next round. Beer is Don't on call. All, all right. right. So, um, Don't spend it all in one place. Why, why that? Yeah. <laughs> one drink each. New <laughs> shirt. Taps it out. Uh, so I will say <laughs> that um, it, it appears that the stipend for being a select board member has been the same for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, frankly, we, we used to love a little tab and link in the U.S. They, those guys were making. They, I think they got a stipend of a thousand dollars a year. Um, I think we were doing 400 a year plus $15 a meeting. Um, obviously, you're not in it for the money, but there's something to be said for for that. So it, certainly, if you want to increase that, or you can, that's you can give yourself a raise. Yeah. Or we can take it all away. Or you can take. Or it you away. can have even more unlimited comp time. That's right. right. <laughs> exactly. I like um, that better. You like that better? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing are listers. This budget I went um, through the police and she made a couple and we made a little bit of changes. <coughs> Obviously, there's a computer software that you purchase for Marshall and Swift cost tables. You guys sign that approval every year. Um, they have Camera, Nemric, uh, Apex, and so they have assorted software to do their jobs. Um, she, you know, there's mapping service in here and 
standard membership. So we did increase the salary a little bit more um, because there had, you had approved uh, salary increases in the past and as more people, you know, require training, it's, you know, obviously the bird is new and um, you don't know what's gonna happen and it's, you know, if someone was to step down and uh, somebody would need some additional training, so. Government operations, um, and I did try to write notes as we kind of went along here. You can see all this is um, pretty good. We've certainly taken the leap of faith by reducing the legal bill. Um, from 25 to 15, that's always a gamble. Um, I do know that for tax sale expense, we've only budgeted 2,500, we did increase it to five. Um, be sending a list tomorrow, finalizing a list tomorrow to go to the attorneys for tax sale. I know we're going to spend more than was budgeted this year, but this will be hopefully our biggest tax sale, and then next year you'll kind of see them. So what's the next step in the process? Or how, what's the, the time table? Yeah. So um, they've sent the initial round of letters, which is what you always ask them to do first, because then it encourages people to pay. The initial list that we sent, um, I can't remember how many properties, and I was just looking at it, but I think we're going to be able to take 12 people off because of that letter that we have people that have either paid in full or have payment arrangements. Mm -hmm. So it's really worth it to do that first step. Sure. Next, what happens is Greg and I turn the list over to the lawyers, and then the fund begins. Then they come down and they'll do research. Um, you know, deed, I've noted all the deeds where they have mortgages, but they have to, you know, I don't care, title insurance. So they'll come down and do their search. Uh, any banks, if any of these properties, which there may be only one, has a mortgage, uh, they'll notify the bank. Um, anybody like that, if there's any lien holders or whatever, people get notified. And then, the obviously the property owner is notified again. Um, and then, if they don't, take action and borrow money to come in and get it paid off. Then it goes to, those will set a tax sale date. And then people will come in and they'll bid on the properties for the amount that they owe. Obviously, people can obviously get into it. You and I want the same property, obviously. Mm -hmm. get into bidding or anything that comes, any money that's made over the cost of the, um, what the, what the okay. towns owe goes back to the property. And then once the property is sold at tax sale, um, there's a redemption period of one year. So that means the person stays in that place, they're they're liable for all the bills and everything for one year. At the end of the year, they either need to have redeemed, um, so which means the person who's paid the money for the property is earning good interest, and they get paid off, they go away, the person retains their house. If they don't, then they are no longer retain ownership of the house, and the person who bought it at tax sale becomes a new owner, and then uh, they would have to start the eviction process. So is that a s next spring kind of a thing, or? It'll happen, you know. it'll happen this spring, yeah. This yeah. I'll turn the list over tomorrow. I don't know how busy they are, but they'll come down here in the next, you know, so I'm, I'm hoping we do it in March. So maybe sooner, depending on them. There's obviously legal requirements and certain things that have to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think we've done as well. I think there's only one, oh boy, one property maybe that we can't locate the owner. So that comes a little bit trickier. But. So anyway, so for government operations, um, you can see, uh, you know, that this is where we included the Better Connection grant money for Jose. So uh, this is the full 7,000 because you can't budget half because he's gonna need the whole thing. And it doesn't go into a fund. So if it isn't going into a capital fund, then it just gets reabsorbed <coughs> back into the general fund. Um, you know, and, and you can see if there's something been a three year average, et cetera, the um, capital, I call it capital building. It's called this capital improvement reserve fund or maybe it's gonna be capital facilities. Um, that has been budgeted a flat of 50,000. Um, added a new line item this year, which is $5,000 to go towards your reappraisal fund. Um, you have about half the amount of money it would need for a reappraisal, and you are, in my opinion, 
about ready for a reappraisal. You haven't had one since 2007. Um, and, you know, obviously property values change. It's just a matter of redistributing, you know, the current property values, whether when the property, when the town was assessed at that time, obviously the listers do a great job of trying to keep on top of it, but you're doing abatements, you're doing more stuff that's, to me, is a sign that you need to start thinking about a reappraisal in the next couple of years. And you have about half the money to do it, would be my estimate. How much is that process normally? It's going to cost you a couple hundred grand. Because we started doing one, and we were doing ours in Bristol, and we have 1,600 heads. Bristol has 1,600 parcels. You have about 1,400. So it's going to cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars to get it done. Not everybody does them. It's tricky to find, hard to find people, uh, outfits that do it. Um, so the good news is you've got, you have probably half the money. That's terrific. So what happens is it's probably going to be a two-year or re rolling reappraisal. So the great news is you have this chunk of money already set aside that you've just saved from the state. Then what can happen is over the next couple of years, as you pay them, you'll be able to pay them. You'll be able to budget for it. So once you um, start that process, so you probably won't see it. Even if you see it in the upcoming budget year, you, you're sitting on uh, like 100 and. 127 or 147. So you have the money to start the process. You wouldn't have to borrow money, I wouldn't think. I think that you'd be able to just pay them. Uh, when we used our, the outfit we used, we paid them a monthly. Um, so, you know what I mean? So you have the mm -hmm. down payment and you pay Do you, you know how long it took them to finish it? We were gonna, it was gonna take two years because it was a, a rolling reappraisal because they are going inside every single property. And there's a lot of legwork that they can do first and then they start then you kind of notify people street by street with postcards and set up appointments and mm -hmm. and uh, you decide whether or not one of your listers already on staff would do the input or would you farm that out as part of the contract but you've worked mm -hmm. that out but you're definitely in my opinion um, it's just my opinion thing for that so it's time to start contributing to your reappraisal I, i'd like to see more of it go more money go in there this year but um you know we just had to start it and then obviously we're just <coughs> preliminary of the budget. So, um, and I know Greg and I had talked um, about your capital improvement reserve fund. It would be nice for you to tighten up the language of that. You know, certainly Greg and I have discussed it, what people voted on at the time, and the very broad explanation that was given at town meeting that year. You know, certainly it would be nice to see you take the 110,000 that you're putting in highways and start a capital, I'm just gonna use basic terms, and, and capital road fund so that you have that money because instead of losing it, for, to go back to the undesignated fund balance, it could go into a capital road fund. This could be your capital facilities money. And then it's nice because then as you have maintenance, things to be built or taken care of, that's, you know, you can, have a list and Greg would obviously manage the priority of what needed to happen when and, mm -hmm. and so that money would be set aside in a capital fund. I think their certainly their intent was great, which was basically you need to start setting money aside in case you have things that happen that you had you're not just waiting for FEMA, you'd actually have some money to pay for things to get to get done. Um, so it would be the same thing with capital road, capital facilities, and then you know obviously you already have a reappraisal fund. Um, but I'd have to look and see if you ever had language, how that worked out for you. Um, so then it's nice because those things are being set aside. I know I just met with the fire chief earlier this evening to do your capital. Right now we have a fire equipment fund. So it's, it's nice to kind of, right now we're trying to put two things in there, which is their equipment and their apparatus. And it'd be nice to split those out so you knew what you were saving for when. So we're separating those out. I have a capital apparatus plan. That he and Gary, I gave him some information, they gave me stuff, I'll kick that out for you. And then Gary and Dave are working on capital equipment. So, you know, it's kind of nice to have the money. So same thing for the highway department. You have capital roads and then you have capital equipment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to have those monies there. So you're not always borrowing money. So you either have a down payment or, wow, you can pay for it. <laughs> so, which is nice for you. Which would be nice for you. Um, let's see. I didn't really have 
appropriations is Paul's bailiwick. I, I, I only have, I, what I did was I left them in italics and bold because I don't know the actual numbers except for a couple that we did receive. Mm -hmm. um, debt service has changed. I took that, you have that FEMA, big FEMA debt of 1.7 million that we were able to get to 1.4. I moved it out of the highway fund here because you refinance debt. So it seemed like Greg and I agreed that it belonged in debt service, not necessarily in the highway fund, even though, you know, obviously some of the money had gone there. So we didn't lose it, it's still here. <laughs> and um, you can also see we paid off sewer bond. So that's why one of the reasons that the budget looked good is you had about $30,000 savings between wages and benefits, plus another $35,000 because of this was paid off. And, and we refinanced the um, long-term, you know, the debt for the, to the 25-year note. We knew that would come down. We talked about that last year. Um, so... Uh, let's see what else you got here. School tax, county tax, alliance fees. You know, so there's not much. Those are all pretty much the same. I know we haven't gotten the um, the details yet, but the White River Valley ambulance. Fees. Okay, so I did speak to. <laughs> I was quite confused by originally, and I, and, I, and God bless Steve Webster. He came down last fall to see me about it. So. What had happened was I was, they had sent a bill for money, for more money, and I was like, wait, I can't pay you that because we, that's not what we'd appropriated. So he, he came down and went through it. What's happening for them is, is there's a, they know what their starting number is for budget, but then they don't know what their increase is going to be. So I budgeted, after speaking with him, I had a higher budget increase. I had 5%, and he said, in his history, they usually remain around one or two percent. So I had budgeted six months. We know what it's going to be. The other six months, we weren't. We don't know. So I put three percent because I was concerned about the rumor of Randolph not contributing. Remember, it was in all the papers, and he didn't feel he had met with the town manager in Randolph as well as uh, somebody in their finance, and, and they seemed to perhaps not be. Maybe that maybe they're not going to go that way. But if they were, that was going to be a big change. Big change for us. So, so um, that's why I budgeted three percent for the months we don't know yet. So if he comes in under that, terrific. It'll go under your undesignated fund balance. But, but he had set a. Because um, last year they they went five percent last year. He told me they haven't done more than. No, they the were at five percent last year. Oh, okay. He, about they they went probably two or three years okay. with uh, pretty level funded, I would yeah. say. Okay. You know, very slight increases. And then last year, they went up 5%. Well, when we spoke on the phone, he said historically, and I, so I had dropped it to 3%. He said historically, they had not been high, so maybe I should go back to 5%. Well, I was just trying to figure out, we, we were at 127.8 last year, 127.9 if you round up. Mm -hmm. And then now you have uh, 135.9. Yeah, because I know what six months of the payment are going to be because he sent us a spreadsheet. So I know what six months are going to be. And then I added 3% on to the following six months because I don't know. But I had five and I dropped it to three after I spoke with them. But. Seems like that increase, that's... that's you have about an eight thousand dollar increase over last year, mm -hmm. which is higher than three percent. Well, I but remember he and they, but Chris, they increased theirs in January, mm -hmm. so they they increased theirs in January. So we haven't even started paying that amount yet. So I know what we're going to pay in January. So that's an increase over this year. Plus we're going to I added so we have whatever the percentage increase is this year that we haven't seen yet. Do you know what I mean? Like our payment in December. Is one amount and it's jumping to whatever it's going to be in January. So there's so for two thousand this year and that year they kind of do a for two thousand eighteen they they went five percent was that right? I don't remember what. Well, they that could be. Well, they went from one twenty one to one twenty seven. The last budget they gave us because went up five percent. They, they're on a calendar year budget. Right. So yep. 
we, so we, I just got their email a week uh -huh. ago or two weeks ago, and, or maybe it was longer, but I didn't read it until a week or two ago, and spoke to Steve Webster last week. So whatever percentage increase they went up, we're basically going to see two rate hikes in, yeah. in this number. So we've just seen the one for January, and then we'll see them again next January. I can just foresee this. This is going to be on some people's radars. Um, well, I'll have a better explanation for you. you know, they I have bring the email. They've got up about fifteen thousand dollars in mm -hmm. two years. I'll forward you the email which is because pretty good hike. Well, ten percent. Who's, who's your person on the board? Because I get emails every month from Steve Who? Webster that talk mm -hmm. about. And Neil about was. I don't know if Neil still is or not. His but. name is still on there. He's still yeah. getting those. Yeah. I think he's still your liaison. I'm pretty mm -hmm. certain. So you are, I get monthly emails from them about their budgets. I can start printing them out, forwarding them to you. But um, if, if that's Neil, yeah, maybe. I mean, I know there's other people that are interested in the community and taking that liaison position. You might mm -hmm. want to Yeah, because actually, he used, to, he used to come in and do a, a presentation at the town meeting, but for the past few years, he has not. Is that an appointed position? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you could. We appoint that yearly? I don't remember. Did we appoint that this year? No, it's a. Uh, I don't recall. The three years. I believe it's. I, I believe it's a three years. Maybe we can look in to see what that appointment schedule yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So I don't remember appointing that this year. No, no, no. 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 Maybe I don't think. I don't recall. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what your history. But, anyways, it would be nice whoever that person is <coughs> if they came in every quarter or something and gave right. me an update. But I can forward you the email I got. I'll forward it. Yeah. Just forward it. Well, I know this was a. Hot button topic in this town when I first came here I don't know, 10, 12 years ago because we were talking about maybe doing our own services. And, mm -hmm. and then it's been pretty level funded here the last three or five years, but now it's yeah. starting to ratchet up again. And I can. Well, I'm sure just like. I bet you there'll else. be a few people looking at it pretty. Yeah. Well, pretty I'll good. forward you his email that he sent me, but um, you know, could be, I'm not sure that uh, rescue trucks and all that are putting them on the sheet. But. Um, and you guys have met, right? Your social services group? So yes, we have. I turned over the, the information to Kelly this morning. Awesome. All right, so I'll get that from her. So it, it's just a, uh, it's like a $900 increase. Okay. Over the Perfect. last year. Um, so is there any questions on expenses, or do you want to go to the revenues? revenues. Hey, one question I did have, unless I can't find it in here. Is one revenue we will start having is the um, the solar array piece, the Green Lantern piece, but is and it's it something like I think our share is like fifteen hundred dollars or something. Is it like coming that. to Bethel or does yeah. it go to both? Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't go to yeah, we get we get half of us. Yeah, he, that's yeah. one. I, I don't know. I didn't know if you had put it in some line not, uh, item. I, I um, so it's not a lot of money. Again, but. I'll have to go. Have yeah. to Maybe Greg can pull up the. The final contract that we signed, but so green I'll get you the number tomorrow. But right. we get half of that. All right, so I'll put. Well, it's at least fifteen hundred. I think it's three thousand split. I think you're right. I think it was three thousand split. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then it goes up by the year, but. So I'll put Green Lantern customer for fifteen hundred. <clears throat> so, um, obviously you had a fee schedule increase. Um, so we did make a couple of changes. Uh, Recreation area fees, zoning application fees. Um, some of the stuff obviously is um, mm -hmm. set by statute, so you not know, have a big control in it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing on highways, on VTrans, as I haven't heard yet, um, to see if there's a follow up email from them to mm -hmm. see. Um, you know, it's always a crap shoot. I'm not sure what. what they always threaten, you know, that you're going to get less, but you never know what they're going to do. So I'll see if there's an email out. Um, but so what I did was, for purposes of budgeting, I just put it in as a flat rate. Um, let's see. Yeah, so everything else is pretty much all set out. Is that the AOT structures grant? Is that what you're referring to? What? No. AOT no. structures? No, I was talking about highways. Okay. Class one, two, three. So, State is, Highway if A. you go down to the AOT, <coughs> I'm sorry, AOT structures grant. I didn't budget anything for that. That was an actual. Like, 
Right. That was the actual. Yeah. I didn't budge anything for that. Cause that was the uh, that's prior bridge, bridge grant. Bridge grant mm -hmm. that we were talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So our yeah, so overall our revenues are going to be local revenues. Yeah, down a little bit. Are down about fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand. But the majority of that comes from looks like some of the reimbursements on the miscellaneous schedule, right? Yeah, because it depends. Some of it I just don't, you know, I don't know what <coughs> grants we're going to get. Um, we do have a green lantern now, so that I'll yeah, we'll add a green lantern back in. Um, <laughs> I left property taxes the same at 50, I'm not sure, and then oh, uh, yeah. penalty I dropped, interest I dropped, mm -hmm. education billing, you know, I'm just not sure, but I probably could put five grand in. Um, so at this point, with the budget as is, we're looking at a one point, actually three, seven percent Increase. There's some questions here, like what you're going to do with constable. Obviously, I put some details in the side of that. Are you going to go from <coughs> 25? Are you going to stay at 20? Or, um, you know, if, if if you're looking for the three percent mark, it'd be, you know, I'm certainly in agreement with Chris that we put more money into capital funds. Hey, what's your thoughts on the um, on the fifty thousand budgeted for delinquent tax? I mean, last year was kind of a an easy target to hit because we had so much back taxes owed. Yeah, well, you still do. I mean, you I know, we could have probably budgeted a hundred thousand. Yeah, last year, I right? mean, I, well, it's, but, I think it depends on the way it rolls. But I, I mean, I gave the number to, to Greg today. I think we collected <clears throat> nine, well, almost ten percent. Um, yeah, yeah, percent over last year. <clears throat> you know, the thing is, those numbers are funny because you, you know you. Well, you collect some delinquencies, then you, you have new delinquencies. So, um, but the idea is, it, we want to get ourselves to zero. Well, yeah. On that, a, so yeah. should we start tapering that down? Because, because if we don't start tapering it down, at some point, you know that fifty yeah. grand is two and a half cents, right? Right. So at well, some point, we're going to come to the end of delinquencies, in theory. Right. And we don't want to have to put that taxpayer burden in one year. Right. Yeah, so I mean, you should we start moving that because needle once down? Because we have the tax sale now, you're going to hopefully <clears throat> see some cleanup if everything sells. You're going to see, because my original amount that we sent was like 225000 I think, or that I sent, that we sent originally. And now we know we're going to drop some of the properties out of there. Mm -hmm. But what is weird about delinquent taxes is this. When they are considered delinquent, quote unquote delinquent, um, in, in Bethel on May 16th, unless you get a ridiculous postmark. So if you, that's when we consider them delinquent. So you're, you always have that first round of people who miss their payments or, so we consider them delinquent. That's when we charge the penalty as of May 15th. So yes, we will clean up 2012, 13, 14, 15, but you're always gonna have some sort of delinquency. So, I mean, I suppose you could drop it to 40, but you're always gonna have that um, delinquency because you're always gonna have people that are in that boat and how big that number is. is you can't, you can't, because it's fresh, right? So there's that number there. You're not gonna tax sale that for almost a year. You know, by rights, once we get really, get through this big tax sale, we will do one, hopefully, for May, we will be doing one in the fall to winter every year to see, you know what I mean, to try to keep up on it. But, I mean, you could certainly drop it to 40, but. So that number is a, a, the amount of money that's meant to compensate for the fact that we'd be, that there are people that have delinquent tax accounts. Mm -hmm. And this money is put in there to, to cover that well, we're we're yeah, down. You know, it's a, <coughs> an estimation of what you need to collect. Right. Yeah. In a in a perfect budget, in a perfect scenario, that line item would be zero. There wouldn't be, or there wouldn't be a line item because you wouldn't be collecting back taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, but Bethel at some point 
in this process years ago, you know, d due to delinquencies, we started to actually budget for delinquencies. We, we did right? it for and, years. I it's think not we, a it's not a sound budgeting. We budgeted twenty five thousand dollars every doing. single year for delinquent taxes because mm -hmm. you're always going to have delinquent right. taxes because the fiscal year ends in June. Mm -hmm. Okay, so June thirty. You have these people in May or the Pedia, and you know there's people there. Right. So, and you can't, or, and yes, you've been sending the notices and trying to collect, but you're not going to charge the penalty and stuff until May. So, it's hard because you're basically, as Greg and I were saying, you're almost always under collecting because when we're sending out the tax bills, um, you're sending out the tax bills based on the grand list as of that moment. The grand list is a living, breathing thing, and it changes because of people filing their homestead declarations late. So that that number changes, um, whether you have grievances, things like that. So the values change. And then, but remember, the school gets their money, <laughs> no matter what, uh, on June thirtieth. So. Bethel's left holding the bag for the school district, so we're trying to collect taxes that we've already paid them. <coughs> so you could, I think eventually, Chris, you'll probably see that at like 20, 25 grand all the time. Well, I just didn't know at what point should we start, Gra you know, do we gradually drop that yeah, no, I think you're right. I think over a period of five years, or do we just cut bait and get down to that number? No, I think you, I would <coughs> gradually drop it if I was you. So is this year? I mean, because basically <coughs> taxes are you're going to mm -hmm. collect it. It's really all how we're accounting for it. It's either going to come in under current or delinquent. Mm -hmm. It's still that same yeah. amount of money that we build. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, so to me, it's, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, you right. can certainly drop it to 40 or 45 this year. And, you know, in a perfect world, there's nothing in there because it's all in current taxes. But that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's kind of why you don't budget a number for current taxes because I'm going to bill in July based on a grand list that was lodged in April or May. <clears throat> and then we know it's going to change because not everybody filed their homestead. So there's always this weird thing. So I think you're really just, it's a number. It's really just, and it could be nothing, it could be something. It's mm -hmm. all just taxes the way they come in is it. I don't think it's a false revenue if that's what you're concerned about. Because well, you're going to take it in as <clears throat> current or you're going to take it in as going well. But we could certainly drop it right. to 40 or 45 this year. But I do, yeah, I would say, yeah, I think eventually you're probably going to get it to 25 and hold there. Yep. So if you want to drop it, do you want to drop it 5,000? <coughs> well, I just didn't, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, we do have the opportunity to do that this year. Because you know, even if you under collect, on it, even if next year you do a great job and it's only thirty thousand, that means your current was higher. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So right. you're really just—it's a number that you're moving around. Mm -hmm. Don't just stop. So, but I, so I, you want to drop it to forty-five this year, Chris? Just to, I mean, oh, I don't know. I just was kicking it. Going down. I mean, so I just so dropping it though changes the percentage. It increases the percentage. Of increase. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, it's not. Right. We're talking, you know, hundreds. Right, of exactly. Whatever, but. But I, I think Chris is but right. It, it impacts that one point three seven, right? It, it's yeah. just a, you know, it, yeah. it's a number that, you know, if, if things were collected correctly mm -hmm. years prior, yeah, you wouldn't, seen it less. you wouldn't necessarily. I mean, yeah, you're going to have that, you know, June thirtieth cut off. Mm -hmm taxes, yep. physical year balance, but you're also going to have it on the other end. I mean, mm -hmm. what you right. may not collect that year, you may have collected it exactly. at the very beginning. So yeah. in theory, it should, yeah. it should wash, right? Yeah, but yeah exactly. So I, let's but, drop it to 45 and then- Because we'll I was shocked when I got on the board to actually see that we had a line item, a revenue line item to collect taxes that are owed mm -hmm. in a previous year. So I thought yeah. that was kind of- well, yes, keeping wise I mean, right didn't really make a lot of sense, but thousand dollars, <throat> and some of that's like super old. Yeah. So I mean, know, hopefully yeah. we're gonna, you know, do well, and we're gonna sell every property that goes mm -hmm. up for tax sale. That will be the goal, obviously. Yeah. I'll be, we'll be looking for buyers, and then you see, nice, and then so even if you don't meet this target, you would have made it in current taxes. So. Or do we keep it another year? And I, I don't know. I'm just throwing the question out there. At what point do we? 
start to ease it down there. I, th I think it's probably a good thing to start easing it down. If you go five a year, and I think you're going to... Because I don't know, I, I don't have enough history on the item, but it looks like it popped up. Well, you can see it was... It popped up back on 15. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there was anything prior to that, but yeah. it pops up onto the radar from nothing to something, mm -hmm. from 15 to 16. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've always gone over the target. But I mean, you have, you have the technical delinquent people, right? right. Which is, you yes. know, if they pay their bill on mm -hmm. July 2nd instead of June 30th, exactly. you know, they're technically delinquent, but are they really delinquent? No. Yeah. But you know, this, the way I see this is more the and true a, delinquent people that are a year behind on their taxes right. and, and we're still trying to collect it, from. It becomes, it's a computer software issue because uh -huh. the ones we charge penalty, whoever, they're all considered delinquent right. and that's where the money goes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a software thing. Mm. <clears throat> well, it's something to think about. <clears throat> um, there. Um, so yeah, so overall, um, and I did draft a budget summary that I put in the town report last year, sent it to Chris, but there's some preliminary things in there. Obviously next week, the, we meet again Monday, and, and the majority of that mm -hmm. will be just about budget because you'll be making mm -hmm. certainly decisions about need to get it done so that we can move forward with the town report. Um, but I think... Um, so do we want to wait until our next meeting to go through <coughs> any of the prior budget? That was kind of the pieces. intent. We were going to have a department here. Do we want to kick around some of our ideas tonight so that we can have that information for the next meeting to know about. That would be good because I Because if, if like I hold on to my questions until next week or next week, then when the department heads are here they might not have enough time to explain why well, they right. really need that extra five thousand dollars. I agree and, and if I need to do some digging I'm, I'm not okay. gonna be able to pull it up. Do you want my list? Huh? Is it, do you want my list? Uh huh. Um so this is just um well one I, I think that um, first of all just kind of Looking through it on a, um, you know, on a macro end of things, um, it was nice to see that one, our accounting seems to be more in order, and and it seems to be that we're, you know, we're not quite at the point where we want to be, but we're we're getting closer, yeah. and you can kind of see that with how um, how the budget has been this past year and to this coming year. Um, the only thing I do worry about a little bit, and this is just the extreme conservative end of me here, is just, you know, wanting to, you know, even when we have a good budget time, you know, good budget times where we don't have to necessarily increase um, drastically um, is a good time to kind of plan for future events, I you know. Agree. I mean, if, if we think that over a period, a long period of time that we really need to be here, and right now we're here, um, and the average is whatever, 3% a year. Mm -hmm. But this year we're just saying, hey, we really only need to increase things 1%. You know, should we just increase 1% this year or should we increase three and put more money into some of those items that we might need two years from now? You know, rather than, because yeah. I'd rather have a bell curve rather than a ups yeah. and downs well, and, and I agree budget with that wise. Because of the situation that Bethel's in, I, I'm sure uh -huh. Greg is, is agreement. A lot of the, things that you have are not in great shape so you know it, it's nice to have some money set aside for especially equipment highway is you know um, in need of things certainly um, equipment and you know one truck in particular they put a lot of money into and you know they didn't have tires and so I agree with Chris I mean if you're trying to hold this three percent then it's it's a smart to set aside money for these things. You know you need a town <coughs> garage or possibly salt shed. The existing town building that we're in now, um, I, my estimation is that we'll remain in there for 10 years. But I spoke to Charlie Martin, you know, at CB, he's like, you need to drop at least 10 grand into this place, Therese, just to insulate the basement and take care of some stuff so that you save at least half what you're pumping out of your heat. Right. So, you know this list. I mean, that's the way it is no matter what town you are. So if you have equipment, fire trucks, um, you know, fire equipment, all these things that you have. So I, I think it makes sense. I mean, Greg and I put in your constable, um, whether or not you buy a 
used vehicle or a new vehicle yeah. certainly depends on the longevity of the existing cruiser, but so you either are going to have money to go out and outright buy a new, another used one, mm -hmm. or you have money towards a new one. So right. I agree with the thought process because it's something that, at least in my impression, you know, we've all been very yeah. reactive. It would be nice to be proactive and to start setting aside money and, and being able to deal with things as they come up. And just trying to balance that out. I mean you know, department-wide, I and mean, mm -hmm. if we go to all the different departments, you know, everybody is still needs to get to that point, right? It's so true. I'm just trying to, you know, when I'm looking through the budget, it's kind of more of a, um, you know, like whatever, the fire department might need 10 different things, you know, right. but do they need all 10 of those this year, you know, and the funny or over thing the next is, three years, or, you know, or... And when you talk um, to them, you know, when you're talking to, whether it's highway or... A lot of these guys need more than they have. This is just what they're asking for yeah. to finally make a step forward. This isn't even everything that they needed or wanted. Yeah. So you know that Bethel needs to move into that in that direction. And, and you know, it's hard to certainly do it all in one year. But um, you're just, you know, I think the goal that Greg and I had was you need to have a budget that people can actually live within and work within and still and not... Mm -hmm. You know, flip out every time we have something <laughs> that's come up that we're getting the money for. And we're shifting money all over the place. <clears throat> yeah, so it, you know. So I had just kind of looked at it overall. Um, I had added in the fifteen hundred dollars for the yep. solar stuff. Thank you. So we were looking at about a round number of twenty five thousand dollar increase in budget to be raised by taxes from last year, which is. Which is just over one percent, mm -hmm. one one point one eight percent. So, yeah. um, so I get, it was talking to um, Teresa about, you know, <clears throat> is this the year to, you know, just put a modest increase, or should we stick to our table and put some of that money aside for the years when we're going to need it, and not have to ask for, you know, if we ask for one percent this year, does it make sense that next year we have to ask for six percent to try and right. increase that, you yeah. know? So just kind of getting that thinking um, mode on that, because you know yeah. that's the way the town for many years was. Was we were very short, um, short-term thinking of you know mm -hmm. peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys. Um, and as you, you're as your long term planning gets there, you're, it gets better <clears throat> and more accurate. We're going to see that okay, maybe this they need fifty thousand this year, and then you know at certain times because of things. That, these are going to increase. Like, you know, in, in 20 years when you need to replace a fire truck, you know that's probably going to be $450,000. So 50 is going to have to at some point go to 60, which is going to go, but they're gradual increases. So if you have the opportunity to increase those things now, mm -hmm. it would be smart to take advantage of it. The thing that I look at is, it's, it's a, I think it's a, Great concept to have to build those funds. Right. We've never done that before, in one right. and that's just a, you know tremendous work on your part to bring us around, steer the ship around this direction. But we've also dropped a couple of bombs on the taxpayers yeah. recently. The ta with the taxes and also with the water and sewer, not the sewer increase, but the water increase. So there's been, you know, I, I hear a lot of pushback about that, why, why. People understand mm -hmm. in the end, mm -hmm. but it's just been a, a couple of big, you know, surprises. Yeah, sure, last year was a 10% increase. And, that and was a so maybe but we I don't go full, we kind of try to keep it down a little bit, showing that we, you know, try to soften that edge a little bit. Well, I definitely I see that. that. They also have to remember that they paid your taxes weren't that high. I mean, if this, you know, for years. So there's two sides of that story. Yeah, right? but, but you I, you know, you think about some of the, the senior citizens. That, I know. You know are really, Absolutely, I agree. Really get. I understand. You know, so there's. I mean, I know. see. I see this year. This past year as the year that Bethel is finally covering its costs. Mm -hmm. You know. And in regardless of what those increases had to be, I mean, we can't operate in a deficit. You know, that's just, 
Um, so, I mean, however, you know, we need to get to the point where we can cover our costs, but we also have to get to the point where we can operate the town in the fashion of which the citizens want us to operate it, which, yeah, I mean, which this year, just covering our costs was a big, or, or last year was a big, you know, was a big hurdle. I mean, our, you know, water rates went up and sewer as well as, you know, we had to retire the long-term debt that we had been kicking around forever. Uh -huh. um, but now we need to continue to get to the point in this town of, of the services that the taxpayers want. Unless the taxpayers determine that they want different services, right? right? I mean, you know, until they, you know, say that they don't want a bare road, and, you know, these things, we got to find a way to get there, right, Mo? Right. But I can give you just kind of what I've been kicking around. But, so I... I agree with what you're saying. I mean, certainly, and that, and that, you know, but there's also, we still had money last year that we obviously had lost money. Mm -hmm. So for me, it, it's still, and I've said this, you know, it's going to be a couple, three years till we really can see exactly what we're going to need to keep it going. And so you don't have a crystal ball. It's hard to know what kind of winter you're going to have. You're budgeting 18 months out. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely think that, you know, 3% is, Two and a half, whatever it is your target is, is, is not a bad thing. I mean, I, I was looking through this and, um, and I just, I, I just kind of went through what, what I was thinking, and then at the end, just kind of looked to see where the percentage was. But um, I moved some items around and increased some other items, um, which was almost, almost um, netted out. Um, take a little bit out of the budget here, put a little bit in the budget there. Uh, I'm still pretty close to that, you know, one, one and a half percent area. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, but some of the things I wanted to kick around the board that I, you know, thoughts were, were, you know, quickly was, and, and we can get the information to the department heads so they can yeah, you know, right, exactly. change our minds or, yeah. you know, um, is, so just the biggest items are if you go to, well, obviously, Public Works is always our, our largest one. Right. So um, we had the salt um, portion of it, which uh, we budgeted $68,000 for the current year that we're in now. We did have the 15% increase in cost. So if we buy the same amount of salt, you know, this year versus our next budget, it was 50, we know it's going to be 15% more. Um, but 15% only brings us to 80,000. Currently we're budgeting 100. So, you know, so for what I'm gathering is we're gonna, we're gonna end up using more salt. Now, you know, right. only mother nature knows what we're gonna use, but, right. you know, kind of going uh, out there, you know, if we, if we use the same amount of salt, you know, as last year, then we will probably be around 100,000. But, you know, it's kind of hard to budget when you don't know, but, just taking what we budgeted last year and adding the 15% brought us to 80. Um, so I was kicking around, you know, using $80,000 with the salt. Um, the, um, which would put $20,000 back into the budget to use somewhere else. We did get the, um, we did get a pretty good deal on some sand, so we took advantage of that this year. Um, so our normal budget's 35,000 on that. Um, we've gone over our budget on that, but that's gonna theoretically, if we don't use that sand up, that should help us for the next budgeting season. Yeah, and the same thing now, if we budget a hundred thousand for salt, is, is is since they had an increase in tonnage this year, mm -hmm. uh, or, or prices, you know, still if Alan has money left, he can get salt, right? Um, if he has a place to store it, so he could also, you know, at the end of the year, if he still has money left in his salt budget, he can. You know, do that. Obviously, mm -hmm. last year we saw an increase in freezing rain, right. and oh, so yeah. yes, we budgeted more than the fifteen percent increase in ton because yeah. you know we just don't know. Well, so what I did is I took twenty thousand out of the salt. <clears throat> so I've just said last year's budget plus fifteen percent increase. Yeah. On the sand end of things, um, you know, we technically bought sixteen thousand dollars worth of sand more. Um, then budget, but we had a good deal on it. That's why we took it. So that's about a half a year's worth of sand. And I'm not saying take the whole sixteen thousand dollars, but what I was going to do was credit back five thousand on the sand. 
Um, and then to pick on everybody. Well, where were you going to put that money? Since it's, I'm assuming that yep. that, that savings of money. So there's twenty five thousand there. Stay in public works. Um, yes. Okay, where are you going to? In, in theory, yeah. Where were you going to reallocate? Well, I was looking at increasing the highway rehabilitation fund by 30000 The reason behind that is we have, we have, uh, we were supposed to start the Sand, Sand Hill Road portion this coming season. If, if we look back through the roadmap that we have, right? No. Sand Hill Road? No. To move some of that money around, put an extra 30000 in there so that we can try and keep that bell curve rather than, you know, do 110 this year and then next year or the year after we're going to have to go up to whatever 140 or 100 there's there's a chart if, yep. you, if you have the um that paving roads um mm -hmm. if you don't have it i can get you a copy of Lindley, but there's it's a paving road analysis yeah it was done yeah. um so i i was proposing taking 25 out of salt and sand put 30 into the highway rehab which that would go into our fund mm -hmm. so um you know that would transfer over from year to year um, on the fire department, I didn't pick on any one, any single one item, because I believe in department heads making the, their best decisions based on what they, you know, can prior, prioritize themselves. But if you take a combination of, if you take a combination of the communications, which Last year was at three thousand. This year they're going to ten thousand, which that's for our computer, portable radios, some dispatching app. Mm -hmm. um, they want to add the internet, which is twelve hundred dollars more. Um, we have the we have the facility maintenance, which I know it was at fifteen thousand dollars last year, and it's going to three thousand this year. Yep. However, it was only at fifteen thousand dollars for that one year because we added ten to it. Typically, it's in the four to five thousand dollar range. So, um, and the reason that we dropped it was we were thinking that the rest of the repairs to that building right. could be taken out of that capital facility fund. Yeah, that's the only reason. Otherwise, we would kept it up because there's still work to be done to the. So o overall, they had um, an increase twelve, um, and then and then obviously there's the the um, the FEMA match grant that we had agreed upon, which was 7000 for the apparatuses. Mm -hmm. Right, so if they don't get that, that stays in. And yep. 5500 is, you know, basically going to the water department. Right. Which is what we agreed on last year. The, um, so there, were, there was a roundabout, I don't have the number right in front of me, but there was around about $16,000 in increase. Mm -hmm. uh, the total budget's up 20000 but there was about $16,000 worth of, you know, these different items. Um, I was proposing out of that 16,000 taking 6,000 away from the fire department. So that would still give the fire department $10,000 to spend on said projects, whatever that might be. If that's maybe we got to wait one more year to get something, you know, the computer or something, mm -hmm. and they have to wait one more year for that. But it was just kind of giving it more of a, you know, let's look really through our our wants and our needs here. Well, and, and don't forget that some of the stuff that's driving your fire department is all insurance related. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, obviously you're having you fire safety, yep. you, if you're not, you know, adhering to NFPA standards, which obviously most departments are not saying we can meet, but you need to be closer than right. several versions away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and their history is that they, you know, they left money on the table for years right. that they didn't use. And um, they should have been buying equipment and replacing things, and, um, you know, ahead of time, so. I have had, um, I've had several discussions with people throughout the, the town in regards to, you know, what we call the constable department, but others, have fear of calling it maybe a police department at some point that don't want to see that. Um, the, um, the consensus right now from people I've talked to is that they're, they're good with the amount of um, time that they see him in, in and around the community. 
Um, so I guess what I had done at that point was just keep the the proposed hours the same as they are currently and not increase by five hours a week. Um, no, I think we, we really need to concentrate more on getting actual 20 hours. And, and I, I don't know why this kind of sticks in my craw. It seems like if you look at the increases, are we really getting you know, what the intention was when the constable was originally brought on board? Uh, we actually getting those things. And, and just the more the organizational part of it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem like we're getting a bang for a buck. <clears throat> in, in several areas, like the, you know, the, the cruiser, running the cruiser back and forth to Rochester. I mean, all these kind of picky things, but getting, you know, definitely getting 20 hours of, of patrol as opposed to, I don't know how, what the average is, but it's, if you count all the training programs and the different events that he goes to and things like that, and those are all counted in that, that number, right? So we're actually not getting 20 hours of actual, you know, boots on the ground, if you will, um, and how all that is organized. I, I, you know, I think that we just need to look at that a little more, look um, at certainly it, tighten, it, tighten it up a little bit. He must have, he must have to get X amount of hours per so. year to, to hold we, his, his... We've had this discussion yeah. because I know it's been an issue and um, basically what we've decided is that he and I are going to sit down every time he's got any kind of training. And I have to, you know, I have to approve the training. We're going to see how it works out as far as the budget, who's paying what portion, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle part, driving that back and forth, that's something he said that just because there's nowhere else to store the car, that's what kind of the agreement was with the handshake agreement in the past. It's, I think he said 11 miles or 12 miles, one way. Um, and it's like this, and it's like that. <laughs> 22 miles round trip. No. I don't how many other times he comes here. Well, no, I'm just thinking maintenance on the equipment, too. You know, running, running, running the rig up and down that mountain. Um, I, I think the concern I have is, or, or in talking to a, a few people in the community that um, that usually have their finger on the the budget and, and have a pretty large voice in the community, is is that the budget is continuing to increase on the constable end of things. And they want to see a presence, but they don't want to see a department um, and so that's kind of the fear well, you know that kickback that we're going to have is you know if you just look back four years ago we were at a fourteen thousand dollar budget and now we're proposing forty six thousand dollars so um, that set alone you know we'll have that hurdle um, I'd also looked at um, well, you know, for the constable just for, also don't forget we, we did add you know the five thousand dollars for the capital yeah. cruiser which yep. makes sense for you to yep. look at the future and two, the animal control yeah. contract. You know, we also add a thousand dollars there because you know, if you take a cat, <laughs> so if someone takes a cat, then their cost is a couple mm -hmm. hundred bucks, and or if there's a dog, and then we don't, and someone doesn't adopt or find that dog, you know, that's that gets pricey fast. Mm -hmm. So you know, in the past, we were that somewhere else. yeah. So we we were coding it to this budget, but there wasn't a budget for it. So right. you know, so some of this stuff that was added was things that Bethel Lights were already paying for. I, it just was never, it was an unbudgeted expense they were Right. So we certainly were trying to find. Well, and, and, and the retirement and everything else. Yeah, that, that's a huge, new, that's a $2,600 a year that's yeah. was not an expense. You no, know, and I agree. I think we, you know, those are the things that, and, and again, we can't do everything in one year, but, right. but those are definitely the things that we should be doing. In the, is is forecasting these retirements and things because we've all seen over the last couple of years we've had some people retire here that we've had to you know shell out yeah. way more than we had budgeted you yeah. know to do that <laughs> um i also was gonna i had proposed here to reduce the cruiser replacement fund from five thousand to twenty five hundred dollars um, and that the rationale of thinking there was <laughs> this past cruiser or, the one that we just got a year and a half ago, uh, we paid $9,000 from, I think it was Brattleboro maybe. Um, if we put, I'm thinking, you know, every 
four or five years, we'd probably have to upgrade that based upon buying and used. You know, um, if, if we go with that schedule, that'll give us $12,000 for something. Well, how old is the vehicle already? It's got 90000 Well, if, <laughs> if you saw what we were driving before, Teresa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was an, uh, what was that, a 92 Tahoe? Tahoe. Um, so I was just thinking if we kept the, you know, that replacement in the four to five year window with another used piece, you know, 12 grand should get us something pretty good. Um, so I had taken that. I, um, cause I think that certainly depends on, you know, don't forget if you, whatever you buy, whether lights and all that stuff is going to retrofit a new vehicle. Yeah, tires and all that know, stuff. All that. I mean, oh yeah. You know, um, so were, you, were you at 20 hours or going to the 25? Well, a, a combination, I took uh, I took $5,400 out and went and stuck at the 20, 20 hours a week, not going to 25. And also 2500 from the cruiser replacement fund. I think it's great. We should have, a, we should yeah. have that fund. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking more four or five year schedule, a $12,000 vehicle because the last one cost us nine. But then we had to put... We had to put tires into it. We, we probably had about 12 or 13 into it by the time we did all the yeah, things we had to do. Um, and then um, I added $5,000 to legal. And legal is kind of like trying to figure out how much salt we need on the road. I mean, yeah. um, usually you would think that there would be peaks and valleys on that, but it seems like it's been more of a peak than a valley here in the last few years. Um, we budgeted more for legal this past budget season, and so far we're doing okay with that. Um, so you're putting that back to open that to 20, you said? Yeah, I just okay. proposed it back to 20. That's what I was. Um, plus, the other thing I didn't know is, yeah, 20. You know, because we had, you know, 15, 16, we were at 22, 8, 16, 17 budget, we were at 47. Mm -hmm. 17, 18, we were at 25. Right now we're at 55, which is, you know, good, but all it takes is well, yeah. something to pop up. Yeah, one, we still have a bill. You know, we got one that we're ongoing now, you know. Yeah. Um, we all know it doesn't take very long to eat, eat that kind of money, so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so overall I had, I had reducing the salt budget 20,000, reducing the sand budget 5,000. Yeah, and then you put that Reducing in. the fire department funding by six thousand. That can come out of whatever line line um, they want to come with, and reducing the constables' budget by seventy nine hundred dollars. So where are you putting that money? An increase in legal five thousand. Right. And an increase in the highway re rehabilitation by thirty thousand. Yeah. But we're still sitting on a bunch of savings. Yep. <laughs> where are you going to put it? I didn't say it was putting it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, because that was the whole point of this um, exercise. <laughs> so um, that was where uh, 20, so hold on. So we get one, <coughs> nine. So I have a $4,000 net positive. I took out 20, 25, 31, plus 8, 39. Yeah. I increased legal, so that takes me down to 34, and I put yeah. 30 in rehab. Yep. Yeah. So it's 4,000. You know, whatever. I mean, that's right. just my kick in the case. But. You could. I mean, the, I, I think the okay, biggest so is the select board increase right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you make that presentation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul, just, Paul is going to do that presentation. There you go. So I'm going to use that. So I was under the impression that you were looking to, to this 3% to kind of yeah. take that bell curve out. Yeah. But by cutting it, then you're going less than the one two, three. Well, oh, that right here and, and then adding that 4 thousand back in puts us at like a one point one percent 
total increase to the budget. Right. The, the only thing I, I don't feel, well, what I'd like to do is add, you know, another 1%, 1 percent, one and a half percent to one of our future funds. But I think we have to really understand where that's best appropriated. You know what I mean? Right, whether it's capital. I mean, I was able to kind of go through the road map of our, of our pave, pave roads, for instance, right. to kind of see where we could probably lessen our blow rather than have to have a spike here in the next three years, we could lessen our blow there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like if we took another one and a half percent, that's, um, 26. you know, 25 grand. Mm -hmm. Is that best served in a capital improvement fund or is it best served in a, you know, but I, I, I do believe that we should take Twenty-five thousand dollars more yeah. that we don't have appropriated in one said identity right now, and put it in a fund for rainy day well, and it could be expenditure a that things. is coming. I mean, you have a highway, or you have a, a fire apparatus or a fire capital fund that's in the hole and will be for a couple of years. There certainly could be some money set aside in there to at least bring that. So that when you have a fund that's in the hole, it's borrowing from the general fund. Mm -hmm. So if you could make that whole, you know that Alan had, is sitting on a garage full of equipment needs. Mm -hmm. um, you know you need a new town garage. Right, so that would be capital improvement fund. So you have, you probably could split that up. Um, I mean, I guess my vote, you know, last year we were at, well, two years ago we were at like 3.1% increase on the budget. Last year, if you take if you take out the long term debt that we had to retire, regardless, we were at two point eight percent last year. Well, but no, we were because you well, had that additional we had to, vote on at the end, the twenty right. thousand for five. Years. But what we proposed to the taxpayers was two point eight percent plus the long term debt, and then there was some items that were voted on after the fact. Right. Um, and I guess what I'm kind of looking at is somewhere around like a two and a half percent increase. Um, which is slightly less than what we had proposed that we could patrol last year. Um, but that being said, that about 1% of the half of that increase is really just going to lessen our blow here in the next year or two rather than have to do another spike on something, you know? I mean, I think that I like the idea, certainly, of putting money aside, and I like the idea of going to the 2.5% um, I think that the department heads know their needs, and I will run a schedule for capital cruiser replacement. I think you might be shorting yourself there. But certainly, um, I would rather see you fund the proposed budgets that you get with input from your department heads. And then after that, I mean, you're still at 1.3, you can still go to 2.5 by funding your capital funds, but why short people what they need well, and that, and that's, and I guess we have to have a little bigger discussion with the department heads is, and it's not that I don't believe that they need certain items. It's just when I look through the budget and it's no fault of anybody, no, you know, it's because but when I look through the budget, I've already found three new computers we need, you know, do we really need three new computers in one year or can we buy one and then buy one next year and buy one the next, you know, I mean, it's, it just seems. And, 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 and probably town-wide, we do need those, right. no doubt. Yeah. But we're still trying to transition from here to here. And I don't, right. you know, you know, can we transition that, you know. And I, I understand what you're saying, but you also have to remember these people have done without for so long. Some of these computers are, are oh, I know. six, eight years old. I will say that once you get people to that point, we started the Capital Technology Fund that we put money in every year so that you didn't have this round robin. You kind of you developed a schedule. We had an inventory done of everything that we own computer-wise, and then everybody was on a, a rotating schedule. Like here, we've been, since Greg and I have been here, we've had two computers or three in the last year that have dot, that have just mm -hmm. fried. So, you know, we've done that. So that was one of these things is some of the equipment that people are sitting on is just, mm -hmm. is old. And so they obviously, all held restraint by trying to figure out what it was that they needed to get their department at least a little bit moving in the right direction. Well, the if the only department currently 
that that I had shorted was fire department, which was six thousand. Right. Now I have a net four thousand dollars left after we went through this, so maybe they're net two. You know, I mean it. Mm -hmm. I mean, or or we soak up the other two. You know. Yeah, I, I the only thing I I like the the computations that you've done, but the fire department one, I think needs to maybe need to stay where it is. You know what their uh, requested budget item is, um, only because the bulk of it, like you say, is insurance related, and a lot of it is out of their hands. And I don't know if taking any money out of that is really going to. It's not a significant amount of money. Right. And but the impact that that small amount of money would have is greater than the impact that it would have on the other end. I mean, I'm happy that the money be reallocated for highway stays in highway, but obviously I would, you know, well, I I'm guess not the road form, but I have a real concern about the cutting salt and right. sand. In the it, it begs the question, what, what is, what's the expectation here? Yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean, Alan doesn't have a magic bullet that says, I'm going to use half the salt that I've used last yeah. year, or I use half the salt that the guy before me used. He's using the salt that's required to do the job. And shorting him is going to put a huge strain on him. Because um, he's going to stay within the budget. I mean, that's that's what we've told him. He's, you know, he's, very good. It, he's required to stay within the budget. So I, I'm just a little hesitant to look at, you know, if you look historically, last year we spent $100,000. The year before it was $86,000. Mm -hmm. You know, we were up at $100,000 pretty close. and. You know, I just worry that are we either going to reduce the level of service that we're providing? Are we going to overspend that line item if we have to? And what are the repercussions of that? Or, to Teresa's point, is it better to put all the money in there, give them what they need to do the job, and then the extra can go for extra? Right. You know, still provide them with what they need. And maybe he doesn't spend all that. Great. That money still goes to an undesignated fund balance. But I, I just, what I'm really, really worried about with the public works people are, are limiting their ability to do their job and do it to the level that the people of this town like, expect. Um, and by cutting that budget by twenty thousand dollars, that's you know that's well more than that. Well, I mean, I guess if you look at it, between salt and sand, I propose to cut twenty five thousand right. dollars between salt and sand. But if you just take a look at the sand that we over-purchased, right? Because we had the deal. That's $15,000. That I'm not, it, so even if we took $15,000 out of this next budget, that doesn't short anybody anything, right? Because that's still the same amount of sand, the same exact amount of salt, right? Sure. So there's 15,000, right. But that's $15,000 that we can find in the budget without shorting anybody, right? In theory. In theory, yeah. So Again, then I, I guess then yeah. all I'm asking after that is, you know, let's, right. let's. And I think it's hard because if he's, say, he, say we stay with the existing budget and he doesn't use all that salt and sand, but last year he had to come to you or, or Greg did to get money out of the capital fund for tires, which mm -hmm. was not, you know, the plan for capital equipment. So. Whereas in this case, if he had saved money, if, if he does save money, we budgeted him the proper amount that he needs and the weather cooperates and he has a little savings there. If he's under there, but all, you know, continues to have equipment trouble mm -hmm. um, and, he, and he, you know, finally gets the tires under everything that he needs and he gets his chains and all the stuff that he needs, then he still stays within his budget, you know what I mean? And tries to have his bottom line budget. Yeah, hell, one year we built a salt shed because we had budget for overtime, budget for this big winter, we ended up getting some savings, so we underspent this, but we built a salt shed. So, you know, we were able to, we still stayed within budget, but we were just, we underspent here and overspent here, so. I mean, in it's some ways. You know, I guess it, you have to, Alan can speak to that, you know, certainly. Or yeah, we're looking for strategies to try to reduce our salt. I mean, it's, that it's, yeah. it's a huge expense. our budget's not set up for it. But in some ways, it would be nice if our budget was set up more like the state's budget, where the state says we have X amount of money, and 
you know, they go through the winter with it. And if they have a really tough winter, then that's less maintenance they do in the spring, right? Well, so if they go through the winter and they have a really tough winter, then that's less, that's less gravel they put on the roads, mm -hmm. that's less pavement they, that, they rehabilitate with. That's what now, if they have a really good winter and they save money, then in the springtime they put more gravel roads. Yep. That's exactly what we do, because we stay with that but a lot. This, but, but if we, if we move, if we move the high re rehabilitation piece to its own fund, then you don't have the ability to do that. Currently, the way we have the budget, you could, technically. You could overspend on your sand and then just do less paving, you know? Right. But if you move this uh, high re rehab into its own fund, uh -huh. then, then your budget's just... It's flat. It is what it is. Right. So if you do come out of the winter with a big savings, you know, maybe you could look at, you know, doing something like that, but you couldn't really like, but that money you couldn't still balance that with your capital. But if he's short, if he comes up way short on his budget, he doesn't need all the salt or whatever. Those funds don't just go away. Those go into our undesignated fund balance and we get to use those funds for mm -hmm. yeah, next something year. else. Yeah, next year you could say, okay, we're going to move some of that money over to, mm -hmm. you know. But I guess, the way, I guess the way I'm looking at it is I, I cut it 25,000 of which mm -hmm. I think we all can agree that 15,000 of it is we, we purchase extra sand that we in theory should be here for this next based off of the budget yes. right yeah. so I, I guess I'm looking to really cut the budget you know ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars you know what can, can we do more for that ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars you know and I don't know I mean maybe we can't but if we don't try you know if I don't, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not you know if yeah. you yeah. if you give everybody the same you know same tools and don't ask a little bit more out of them are we ever gonna get you know a little cleaner or meaner than well, the thing, the sand set on to one, whatever the lowest setting is. That's what they do, and they, they use it as sparingly as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Because Alan knows better than anybody that sand, salt, material is expensive. Right. <clears throat> and he will not go over his budget. Mm -hmm. he, and then the one item he did was, a, was an error, actually. Yeah. But he said, anybody in the town. <clears throat> you know, if it gets set at 8,000, I mean, we'll just, it gets, it, we'll deal with it. It is what it is. I mean, it's... If you cut it out on your salt, your sand, you're going to use 20 percent more sand because they're going to replace they're going to sand so it's all well and the people of this town you know the expectation is is that that asphalt is black it's not that there's some snow on the ground and, and maybe that's unrealistic because this isn't a you know we don't have a bare road policy right we don't have a bare but road we policy. have that expectation so i think that's a whole other discussion that we need to have and the board needs to have is what is realistic and, and then we'll just we can budget and we can operate mm -hmm. to that expectation but right now, the expectation from what I've been gathering from people and the complaints I get is that my roads better be plowed when I got to get up and go to work, and these roads here in town need to be asphalt, and that downtown needs to be cleaned up. And I, and I think you know I, you know that ten thousand dollars difference on the material. I mean, there there are still some opportunities in here if if somehow we did run over to make that up in this budget. I mean, we still have, you know, we still have diesel in at fifty thousand. Yep. You know. Um, our last budget season, it cost us thirty-five thousand. This year, we're pro we're on track for like forty. Yeah. Um, you know, the cost did go up slightly, but it's come back down recently. So, you know, let's say we're in the forty to forty-five. I mean, there's five or ten thousand dollars there that could help out. Yep. You know, if needed. I mean, I know, it's, there's some opportunities. It's just so I mean. hard to know because we, you know, I mean. Last it's impossible to know what the price of diesel yeah, is going to be. Yeah, I mean, I read Wall Street Journal articles and what's going to happen to fuel prices, what's going to yeah. happen to, you know, we put that out to bid this year so that we got a good percentage of a rack price, which was good for us. But it, it's so hard to know when you're reading about that sort of thing. You know, commodity is trying to figure out what the what the future holds. And, and um, so. And, 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 and the other thing, too, we talked about. about you know, up until, you know, this winter season, I mean, we had McAuliffe that was taking sand out of there to go use for the school. True. So there were other costs that were being incurred by the town that won't be this year. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I guess is how do we dangle the carrot and get more, you know, we, we lower the expectations of the people in this town. Yeah. We will perform at whatever the budget allows us to perform. Right. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. People want more than the taxes are going to want. That's that's that level. And of I certainly think that you 
you know, you, you, you have hired department heads to do a job, and, and certainly if you think that the carrot dangling or whatever, then that, that's an issue you need to deal with through uh, personnel and evaluations. If you don't think you're getting all you can out of that department head, then that's, that's a, that's a, there's a different well, I mean, winter is a different game, anyways. You don't know what you're getting. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. You got to go kind of on averages and. Exactly. Um, but if you don't ask for it, you'll never get it either. So if you don't, you know, if you say your budget's fifty thousand, then you're going to use fifty thousand. I mean, that's you know, unless some something drastically changes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if we had a bad fall and coming into January and February, our budget's used up. Okay, that's it, guys. No more. We're going to stop right now. Well, I think that, you know, I mean, I guess the way I would like to see it is more kind of like, like I said, the state end of things where you you balance your winter maintenance with your spring and summer maintenance. Well, but, I think that they do that. Well, that's, I mean, but then it's hard to separate out your fund then. Right. Know? Well, that is what we do to a cent. I mean, if we have, if we go over, this hasn't happened, you know, it doesn't happen, but if we were to go over because we had to, let's say it was a horrible winter and we had to get extra salt, whatever. Logically, what we would do is not spend up to our, our um, budgeted amount with some other items. We'd grab save somewhere else. Right. Yeah, that's just how we have That's because we are, I mean, Teresa and I are adamant about not going over our budget. Yeah. And, and I know it's a, a little bit of a moving target, but what we, we sit around every once in a while and we're going, okay, where do we find the money? So we know that there's a solar expense here. We know it's going to happen. Nothing we can do about it. How do we find that money? Right. So we do do that. Oh, but no. but yeah. by, by lowering that budget item and, and getting up to that number quickly, it just I'm just worried that we might get there and start to kind of cause issues with, with the type of maintenance or, or the So what the if we, we agree to leave the SALT budget the way the way it is, but cut the $15,000 and overpurchase sand out? I mean, because we already bought that sand for, you know, we bought it in a different year, but we're going to use it. You taxes are coming to cost two roads. You want, you want to cut back on that? On all your taxpayers? 80% of them? On the sand? Yeah. No, but we've already purchased the sand, though. It, it's going to be in the pile for next winter. So what are you, are you, oh, you're no. saying that 80% of the residents live on class two? Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but if, if yeah. we cut the fifty, if cut if we cut the sand, well, let's cut the salt right out totally. No, but what I'm saying is we've uh, we've over purchased the sand already, though. Right. Oh, so we had we had a budget of thirty five thousand dollars to buy sand. If we only in this salt, year that goes in salt, if class one road we could get by with twenty thousand dollars in sand and salt. Which class one one is Main Street? That's it. I, I think what your point is that is, is a somewhat, it's a fair point. I mean, I that, so. that $15,000 should not, in, 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 in his mind, was not going to be spent until the next budget. And we can't do that. It is, it is what it is legally. So we overspent on it. So I can, I mean, I think I can, can sell or buy the, the theory that there's a, a credit of $15,000 worth of sand sitting out there. Now, I mean, we don't know, of course. We don't know if that's how much is sitting out there. There's financially that much money sitting out there, that much sand, but we don't know how much we're actually going to use. So I see your point. I mean, it was overspent. Yeah, I, it's, I mean, it's about... Yeah, it was pre overspent. Pre-purchased, basically. Basically, that's a better term. But we're not cutting back the services to those folks that live on the dirt roads because we cut the $15,000. Well, you don't know what the sand is going to look like next week. Unless we have a tough winter, yeah. Uh, but that's what half the man. Thousand dollars over has already been paid for in this year's budget, right? It, well, yeah, because Alan's sweating it. But we just said, look, you're, you you've taken possession of the sand that I mean, has to come out of this budget, and so he said, you know, what am I doing? I said, well, you're gonna not fund something else because yeah. you have to come up with the money. Same mm -hmm. thing that we told Mark when we realized that Mark needed to be paying retirement. I said, we well, got about thirteen hundred bucks, and he's like, yeah. And I said you can't spend somewhere else in your budget because I need you to cover your own expense. And so I'm getting it wasn't happening. It's happen. already paid for. That sand is already paid yeah. for. So and this year's budget. It's already paid for. Right. So Yeah, but so what I'm saying, Mo, is we paid fifty two thousand dollars for sand that we budgeted thirty five for, right? But that sand is sitting on the ground, right? That sand is not gonna rot. If we take fifteen thousand dollars worth of that sand and you leave it in that pile and you don't use it. It's not going to rot for next year. Well, that's the same thing as uh, 
you're, you've got a, a resource there that's already there, whether you, whether you use it or not. So it's, it's all, yeah, like you said, it's always there. But it's, it's good to have a reserve of it, isn't it? Right, so if you leave $15,000 in sand there, and they you don't touch that until next year, then we only need, in this budgeting season, we only need to come up with half. But, you know, back to the school thing, I mean, McAuliffe was using salt and sand to take to the school. Right, yeah. More so salt, you know, so there's going to be, there's, some, there's going to be a savings there, because that school was pristine every time it snowed. Who is doing that this year? They're contracting out themselves. And that was the way it was supposed and to be. And they aren't getting the material from us? No. So there should be some savings there. I don't know. So I think it's been pretty silent. I don't know how much went on that school, but there was a lot. We, we, even, we don't know how much he took. So we, we knew how much went in his truck to hold, but we don't know how, many, how much he had. He had a contract that said the town paid for it. Yeah. But every single day that, I mean, I bring my kids to school every day. Every single day well, that was, that thing was salted. I yeah, mean, I'm telling you, it was over salted. Okay. When it dried up, it was white salt still up there. Yeah. Oh, there was, there was a lot of salt being used. So there's some savings. And sand. Yeah, you see in there, too. Taken into consideration. No. Sure. I think there's some savings there. I, you know, what we yeah, we could, it, could it be something like splitting the difference instead of taking 20,000 out of the salt, take 10,000 out of the salt and 5,000 out of the sand. So it's it's not quite the, the 30,000 right. we're aiming the, for, but it's still, it's still putting something back into the capital budget. And yeah, at well, the end of the day, wherever, however you fund each one of these line items, we're going to spend it however we need to. Right. Right. It may be that we, we have a, a you know we have to spend a bunch of salt we just won't use as much sand or I mean that's all we have to do because we're constrained by the budget because we're not going to overspend the budget. I mean I guess the way I, I look at it is you know we've already overspent on the sand that is in a pile to be used. If it's not this you don't winter, want it way underfunded and then next year have somebody say well why did you increase it this much this year. I mean, I, I think you have to sort of play within what people's understandings of the needs are. And so even though we've overspent it this, this year, if we underfund it too much for the, for the coming budget, then when we increase it again in the, in the future budget, people are going to not quite understand. They're going to look across that line and go, this doesn't make any sense. We overspent, we underspent, yeah. we over, you know. And you're going to get a lot of people on class two roads saying, how come you're cutting our same budget? Well, you're going to get the same questions if we leave it in there and we charge everybody extra penny on their taxes, right? I mean, we're going to right. get that. So, so you your know, theory why we the, it kind of just, what I would kind of do maybe to compromise is, let's say that, okay, so we're saying we got $15,000 in kind of a credit. So you leave the, the sand budget where it's at and you reduce the, the salt to 85000 If we have to spend $100,000 on salt to maintain the roads to the level that people in this town want, we're going to do it. But we're going to cut something else. Right, you'll cut gravel, or you'll cut something else. Or whatever. That affects yeah. your class two people instead of all these people that want to pay them. But I mean, just, just numbers-wise tells me, just if, if we provide the same exact services that we always do, the same exact services we did last year, right, we should have $15,000 there. Mm -hmm. And we should have whatever the number is that McAuliffe was taken for salt and sand to the school, whatever that is. Yep. Making if that's one, five or ten thousand dollars, then there should be another five or ten thousand. Making one assumption that that is that the sand pile was and the hole they generated was normal, right? Was a normal size. There's a right. hole they fill and then they pile it up, right? So we're making this assumption that that was a standard size hole, if you will. Yeah. I, guess. I mean that that's just gonna you know if we do provide the same exact services that we did last winter and our winter is equal to last year, mm -hmm. then we should have fifteen thousand dollars sitting. Right, so you're saying then make plus some extra savings. Eighty five, make leaps, yeah. put sand at thirty, and then add fifteen to the capital fund. Well, you know, instead of having one hundred and thirty five thousand for both of those, we have one hundred and twenty thousand for both of those. You know, however, yep. whatever line item you want to put it in. Mm -hmm. Like Greg said, if salt ends up being a hundred thousand, then they'll take some out of gravel or or whatever they don't. So we have 85 on salt. I thought that's what you said. 85, I was thinking 85 and 30. Okay, 85 on salt and then 30. And then there's your 20,000. There's your 20,000 and then add that 20,000 to the capital fund. Is that, is that like? The 30,000, what? Adding. Adding 20,000. 
15 plus to add in 20,000. So he's saying take the salt and drop it from 100,000 to 85,000. Drop the sand from 35 to 30. It gives and 20, take, gives you 20,000. Add that to the capital fund. Make it down to 30. The highway fund? Yeah, the yeah. highway fund. Yeah. Making yeah. Make it down to 30. Right. Is that, that way those. Because you'll see if you look through your, your paved roads, mm -hmm. you know, I know they get confusing when we say the yeah, roads because they're all about the same, but yeah. if you look at it, there's a big peak here in the next, if we do the plan that was given to us yeah. over the next three years, where it spikes up to that fund we're supposed anything. to put like $180,000 Yeah, in. so it's nice yeah. to get And there's no way we're going to be able to increase yeah. that 70000 So if you put it to that, it gets to 130000 this year, so, which is nice. So you went from one ten to one thirty. Right. And not to mention, we didn't do some stuff this year because of the whole bridge issue. You know, we lost out on $80,000 because of the bridge. Well, it wouldn't have carried over anyway. I mean, I guess you could have, right. you could have gone to the voters and asked them, I guess, to... You could have, you, we could have asked them that, to move it into a fund. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to 85, I want to make sure we clarify, 85 salt, 30 sand, and that puts 130 in the capital fund or the, yeah. the highway rehab fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will do a capital cruiser replacement um, for you for the next, I can kick that out and put that in the next budget so you can look at that. That way you can see what year the current cruiser is and what, you know, and then give you a target. Um, and are we saying right now just to keep the fire department the yeah, same? Yeah, I, I, I agree with the consensus was. Um, no? Know, I, I keep the fire department the way it is right now? Or? Yeah. And then, but yeah, are we in agreement with the constable changes? I would look at something that in. The fire department? No. <laughs> you mentioned the, the constable. constable budget. I think the tough thing is, I mean, it. What, what was your proposal on that constable again? I know you were talking about dropping the. Stay at 20 keep at 20 hours, which saves you $5,400 yeah. there, and. 2500 for the cruiser. 25 yeah. Okay. So it saves you. For a buck? Huh? I think at that you do. I mean, I, I, well, I also, I think you could, you could look at increasing the fines. Well, I think we need to be. Well, isn't that statement, the fines are what? The, you get a percentage of the fines, but based on how many tickets are written. Right, right. And so obviously, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to say that you, that they need to have X amount of contacts per year, or per mm -hmm. month, or per whatever, per right. shift, or I think however. the enforcement needs to be more consistent. Right, so what you're saying is, is obviously it's always within their discretion whether or not they're going to write a ticket and it's hard to issue quotas but it's certainly well within your purview to um you know have contacts the terminology of contacts made it we also kelly ran a report and i should have given yeah, you all that to see how many yep. tickets were generated 30, last year 34 tickets up until um let's see last date was november 4th so 34, 34 tickets were, tickets were from July 1st to November? No, from the beginning of the year. He's got an awful lot of verbal warnings here, too. The, the, the report goes back to January oh, yeah. 14th. Yeah, yeah it's in the back. Oh, okay. It's in his report. Yeah. Goes back to January 14th. It's on calendar. So he's written 34, 34 for the whole year. Since year. January. I didn't count up the verbal warnings. But yeah. Not, there's a lot more. Though. Well, I think we talked about that before, so having the enforcement be more yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm consistent. Kind of, yeah, let me see what I did for the um, budget. Well, so what do you mean by that? You mean by writing more tickets? Because I don't know, I don't less know more, how. Less well, I think it needs to be more consistent. I mean, if somebody if, breaks the rules, then you pay for what you get. I mean, you just a verbal warning. I mean, the, so write a ticket to everybody. Yep. I mean, we've looked at the places in which the speeding is occurring are in, you know, really safety areas in the town. I mean, they're 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 going on Pleasant Street down by the school, um, a majority of them. I mean, those are the ones that people are doing 20 plus miles per hour over the speed limit. And in some cases, he gave them a warning. You know, I mean that. If we're just going to continue to give people warnings, then or you know the why have a constant? Right? I mean, it's 1718. You'd budget well, we'll just a thousand have the and any road sign. So, um, and then, but so it would be nice to be consistent with the budget because in 1718 you budget a thousand, they go 2800, 1819, 
budget two thousand based on that and five hundred dollars is all we've collected. So we're usually a month behind coming from the state, but so we're not on target to make that. I mean, well, maybe you are. I guess you, you might be on target to make the two grand. I mean, so. we're going to budget a number to put in there for what I we think tickets be, might be. I mean, we don't want our constable out there saying, oh, I got to find another thousand no, dollars ticket no. today. However, our constable can be a lot more consistent on when he pulls somebody over, and if they're doing 15 over the speed limit, he gives them a ticket. He doesn't give them a warning, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly certain things Because very seldom on any of his reports do you see... I mean, when he, he'll say, you know, doing 52 and a 25, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll say, gave a warning. And it's like, well, what, in a school zone, you know, why, why'd we do that, you know? I, and maybe you see when they're more consistent, it's easier to budget that number, sure. you know? I mean, I, I don't think any of us want the, okay. our enforcement out there based on a budget. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> <laughs> But if he's more consistent, it's easier to budget. Right? So I do think the increase in legal is is not is, is probably a money is a smart move. I mean, it, you know. I mean, legal is no, no I guess it's another thing like doing salt and sand. I, yeah. I, I mean, we hope we don't have to use it, but the last few years we've used. Um, right. yeah. We're averaging probably about thirty well, grand. Yeah, there's a big one. We just signed a nine thousand dollar invoice from uh, Alvinelli for the. Little. Hopefully that's the last of it, or we'll be close to the last of it. But. So we'll add the revenue back, in, or the revenue for Green Lantern, and then we'll make these changes. Greg and I will see where we're at. You want to get to 2.5%. We'll come up with an amount of money that makes up the 2.5%, and then it seems that like Greg and I could make a recommendation of how you should divvy out that 2.5% to what capital funds. Is that what you're going to be looking for on when we do this again on Monday? And can you... Demonstrate with examples what two and a half percent does to the average taxpayer based on a based on a hundred, you know, whatever kind of an increase we're yeah. looking at. Yeah. So you want to see it on a two hundred thousand dollar home, basically? Is what you're... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just a couple of different, you know, examples. Yep. Basically see what the impact two and a half is. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure about doing that. All right. We just so gotta look and see. Like, what, uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, right now where our budget stays and, and the numbers that we just talked about, regardless of the 2.5% thing, I mean, right now we're at like 1.2%. Um, and, and it's a pretty comfortable budget for short term, you know, next year. Mm -hmm. But is it an opportunity to put some money away now for, you know, I guess that would be the question oh, no, we have to ask ourselves. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Because it's, mean, the, it's yeah. the short sightedness that got this town exactly. issue that we're in now. Exactly. <laughs> so. and, 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 you know, Greg and I have already sat with the department head, so, you know, I have to say, when you work for a municipality, you are used to doing a lot with a little. And, you know, so I think that your department heads are that way too. And, and you know, when Tim and I are going to sit down next week. Um, just to come up with a draft mm -hmm. water budget um, and we're ever be gone, but we'll just, but anyway, we've got to put something in town for it. Uh, so obviously we'll come up with some sort of a draft budget for town court. Obviously we'll go in until May, but if we'll, you know, pick that up too, that'll be something else to look at. Thank you. Yes. At least we're having these discussions, like, no, I you know, think it's great. On prior I boards, I don't think we've spent nearly this kind of time on. No, I think I it's nice I to be able I mean, to get everybody. Lisa was here for some of it, but not a lot of it. I think where did that get us? Personally, the difference is you've hired someone who's a professional to do the budget. And so she comes to you with those numbers sort of already researched and well, because stuff. Greg and I have already met with the department heads and gone yeah. through it and you know, right. Greg's given them. Right. Driving. So no, just as so. the observer, that to me is the difference. Yeah. yeah, I think it makes it easier to go. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Trudy. <coughs> <Hi. laughs> yeah, I'll forward you the email from Steve. How is the grand list looking? Wonderful. About the about same. I mean, yeah. slightly, probably going to go slightly down. 
know what I hear? Yeah, because you just settled with, um, you had two people that went to the state, um, and you all have done grievances or abatements and that sort of thing. Um, but I think you're going to see a little bit of reduction because we had, um, yeah, because a couple people have, have grieved. Lang Durfee. Lang won. So you got a couple of them. Yep. Oh, and plus two that. <coughs> He won that appeal. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, there were some, you know, some other changes that have that have happened. So yeah, I think you're going to be down a little bit. Again, sure. that's my press on why you need a townwide reappraisal. Yeah. I know that you're concerned about the value of the grant list dropping, but it basically just needs to be reallocated yeah. properly. And and, and um, you know, and, and it's time since your last one was 2007. So, anyways, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, we'll Trees. Again next week. <laughs> <laughs> We ought to send out for pizza or something. <laughs> well, these are these are early ones. Here. Here. Yeah, <laughs> some of the here. ones I, I've been in. I, I I I think the latest I ever was here about ten thirty one night. But well, we're not gonna do that tonight. No. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's move on. Like absolutely not. No. Let's move on. Get Mo wants his extra comp time. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Land and Water Conservation Fund. Yeah, so this is just a resolution that's required. Um, I just finished up writing the, uh, the grant, uh, the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant is for the skate park. So this is, Night, this is just the resolution that's part of that application. It basically says that, uh, that you, as a town, have sponsored $55,000, 50000 from the, the fund and 5000 for the Tony Hawk grant. Um, that you agree to sponsor $55,000 and that we have 100% of the project cost that we can pay up front and it's reimbursable for the other part. Oh, okay. What's the, what's the amount on the grant? Or? The amount of the grant is, I think it's $130,000, something like that. It doubles this plus there's some in-kind. So I use the in-kind that we had yeah. for that presentation. Uh, on that project that came in at like $80,000 or whatever it was, there was an in-kind of roughly $8,000. So I added that plus I matched the 55,000. So we're asking them for 55,000, puts it up to 110 and then there's, oh, there's some other money. I don't know, I'm tired tonight. I don't have the whole thing with me, but. They probably have another. I think it's 120, I, wrote, I wanna say it's roughly <laughs> 120,000 total project. Yeah. It's roughly it's 120, right. so. We'll put in 55 that we've sponsored, and then there's 55. Oh, there were some other funds. They had done some uh, um, <clears throat> fundraising. Mm -hmm. So there was some fundraising costs. There was, there was one some, other grant they had got. Yeah, there was like a, a little $1,000. There was a Tony Hawk grant. There was some mm -hmm. fundraising stuff. So there was a couple of little things that added to that, that bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, but the only part that the town is going to be putting in is the $55,000. Mm -hmm. And when will we know about this grant? No. Uh, it'll be early spring. And, and you just sign this, right? Yeah, I just need you to uh, approve it, basically, the resolution, and, and I'll sign it and take it, send it out. Move to allow Greg to sign this resolution. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now, Greg, what part does the Federal Land and Water Conservation folks have any input into the design and yeah. or you the only reason why they don't work it on the property? they don't have any any really input into that okay. uh, the only thing that that I guess the only thing that, that goes along with this is that when you designate or when they give you grant funds for a piece of property whatever that designated piece of property is is has will then be designated for as open space park and rec space open space in perpetuity yeah. Uh, yeah. So that goes, yeah. is that in here? Yeah. yeah. And it's already, actually has already been done because when they did the original master plan, we got grant funds from this grant and the entire map was part of that, okay. that grant. So it's already really been done. All right. So just to make sure I have it right though, d um, Lindley, did you do the motion? Yep. And who seconded? Okay. No, did. That's what I have down, but I just wanted to double check. And. Any further discussion in regards to that? Good. And we had the amendment to the fee schedule. Yeah, this is just uh, cleaning up. Uh, let me sign this real quick. Uh, cleaning up one little item that I didn't realize was wrong. The um, 
family season pass for non-resident was from 80 to, and we had 110 before. That was a typo. That was supposed to be $100. Okay. That's what all of our literature and everything has on it. So we want to just make sure you guys, if you could give me another, uh, approve the, the revised fee schedule, we can move forward with $100. Make a motion we approve it. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Select board minutes from the 26th. Yeah, so I'll just go through just a couple items real quick. Um, the planning study grant that we just applied for um, to revise the, the town plan has been approved. So um, the planning committee, planning commission will start working on that with Two Rivers, starting to, to kind of get that all in order. So probably going to be some public outreach going on here pretty soon, getting some information from the, the townspeople. But that didn't get approved, and we're moving forward on that. Um, the bill of new property, we kind of know where we're at there. Just waiting to hear back mm -hmm. on that one. Uh, last thing is Green Mountain, Green Mountain Bible Camp. After over a year, we found out that we, we won that. And so that's going to help uh, the grand list. That money will not go away. Um, that value is all going to still be there. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really good news. Um, the tax sales moving forward. Uh, as, as Teresa said, we sent some letters out. I've got really good response. I've some quite a few people come in and, and either make sizable payments or set up a payment plan. So we're, we're going to move forward with that. Uh, that's really it. Um, it's pretty late, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Anybody? No? Anything? Okay. Oh, one, one quick thing. I do have a sample of sand. So Al and I are looking at some sort of a, a sand salt mixture that to try to use on some of these paved rows. Um, to save salt. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has got a really nice grid. It's clean. It's really good stuff. So if you hear anybody or anybody screaming that we're putting the sand on the, ground, on the paved roads, <coughs> that's what we're trying. Just going to kind of see how it works out for us. It's a sand salt mixture. Yeah. But this is a very gritty sand. It's clean so it doesn't get muddy. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. And uh, we'll put a little salt with it, but yeah. not nearly what we put down right now on our paved roads. We will not do it on downtown because it's curb and gutter and we don't want to muck all that up. But it'll be in Paved areas where there's not class two roads, class two drainage structures. Yeah. yeah, not drainage structures. Yeah, so mountain. Road. If you hear that we're putting black mud or something on the road or whatever, that's what it is. Okay. It's because we cut the budget. <laughs> Aren't trying to do my part? Uh, I have too. too soon. I have big shoulders. Video. All right. I didn't see any constable reports yeah. in there other than the, it's uh, just the ticket log is in there. But yeah. Any other uh, communication? I didn't see anything in my packet other than uh, did you want to talk about the Christmas bonuses now? or? Sure. Yeah, that would be a good time to do it. It looks like you've got a few mistakes here. <clears throat> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I handed out. Um, Sorry, I got this last second. I didn't even think about it. And the girls in the office said, hey, you know, you so uh, these are our annual Christmas bonuses. I need to either have the board say yes or no. So it shows what we did in 17. It's based off of uh, $50 the first year and then $10 additional for each additional year. That's been the standard up to $200. That's where it maxes out. So that's, that's basically all this follows. Um, I think I've got everybody in here. The board, of course, you guys get a Christmas bonus of uh, twice your no, comp time. <laughs> twice yeah. comp time? Twice right. your comp time. Mm. So. I move we accept these Christmas bonus proposal. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We expect the president. What's that? We expect the president. We didn't even get invited to the party again. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, 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 yeah, you know how uncomfortable here. it is for all my employees to sit here with all the board members. There would be no mm -hmm. party 
It would be like sitting in Are you saying church. Have fun? You're intimidating. Me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's Mo. Mo's it's the quiet, smiling ones that are intimidating. Wait, do you see how intimidating we are when we're sitting on the sand pile? You yeah. coming to look for your sand right now? Party. Ooh, we measure that out. <laughs> one scoop for you, one scoop for you. So, how, yeah, because you got General Q Public going in there and taking off five gallon buckets of it. Yeah. 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 I still, you guys don't understand. I mean, you guys are out of my favor. It is shut it down, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, let's see. Anything, any other business come before the board this evening? We do have an uh, executive session. And, and I will try to. Do that or what? I don't even have it. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Does this have to go to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that needs to come out. That, yes, that's a budget request. Um, if you want to do, talk about it, you need to. Um, so basically, the Conservation Commission, um, they have some money that's uh, set aside in the budget every year. Um, but it's not in a fund so that at the year end, the money gets resolved if they don't use it. So mm -hmm. what they've asked is to establish their own Conservation Commission fund, which, um, you know, when we need to purchase a piece of property, um, we would have that money or matching funds or grants or stuff like that. So um, what they have asked for, it's a little it's a little unclear in here. Maybe Greg can um, clear it up. But from, from what I see here is they're asking for $2,500 to be put um, into said fund to start it, um, from what I understand. Yeah, and I don't know if she means an additional, but we'll, we'll clarify it. So this would be something we would have to vote on, so. Yeah. Well, she'd have, so you'd actually have to establish the fund, so the taxpayers would have to establish that fund. Well, what do they normally have for a line item? $2,500, that's in their operational budget. Okay, so right now, if they don't use that money, it goes away. Right. right. They're asking so, for a capital fund to be established. So they want to start the capital fund with this. So it'll grow by $2,500 every year. Right. It'll be just a regular yeah. line on the budget. But, it'll be but this year, I know is, does she want 25 to operate on and 25 for the budget, right. the capital budget, or does she just want 25? Right. We don't know. Right. Yeah, because it it, the way it reads is wants to request another 2,500. So. Right. Right. Um, well, but she would probably, because but, she got the request every year, wouldn't she? No, but historically they haven't spent any of their $2,500. Right. So my guess is that she means that yeah. into a budget as opposed yeah. to, yeah. So we'll have to add that to a line item for, for that. Um, so if that's something you're willing to do, just let me know. We'll have to put that on the morning because I'll have to go to a vote to establish that, that fund. I think it's a good idea. I mean, I mean, especially conservation. I mean, that's one of those where they may not spend any money for ten years, and all of a sudden need some matching money for to buy a piece of kind of help us right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I think that's good. Go okay. before the well, I will. I'll go ahead and put that on the warning. Um, so we could actually remove that twenty-five hundred dollars out of the budget. And put it well, I'm not remove it, but we'll move it to. Uh, well, I guess it depends on how we it all depend on how we um, put it into the well. It either becomes a zero for their operational budget and 25 for their capital, or it becomes zero to zero if they don't get it approved. So we can either leave that 25 and then add another 2500, or we can remove the 25 from the operations budget and put it into a capital budget. I think that's what we'd be looking mm -hmm. at. It'd be I, mean, I don't imagine people are going to complain and they're, they're going to vote to establish it. Yeah. So. Okay. That's all I got. Any other business? Okay, I will entertain a motion to enter executive session to d discuss the dedication. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Will we make a decision tonight on the dedication?